Hey, Good Fox here. Today we got Mutt Men episode number 95, and we're joined as always by the Texas boy. How are you doing, good sir? Doing good. A little bit sick, but we're going to go to push through it, man. You know how NFL players play through like cramps and pain and like broken fingers? Like, I'm, I'm on a podcast today playing through a cold. I'm just as tough as them. Yeah, you, you and uh, Michael Jordan's flu game, it's up there in the same level, right? I mean, apparently it wasn't the flu. He had food poisoning, which is like not even the same realm. So, y'all need to stop touting that game. He was, really? It wasn't. He wasn't sick. He just ate some bad food the night before. So you're starting off this glorious podcast with Michael Jordan hate, huh? I think, yeah, I think we're starting it's, it's, it's a fake story. So okay. fake news is a big thing right now. So I was fake news back in the day just well, to add to Michael Jordan's legacy. Well, there, if we want to get into Michael Jordan's legacy, you know, he was suspended for two years for gambling as the big conspiracy, too. And he also the terrible GM. So, like, anyways, I'll play my ass. That's enough non-mutt talk. <laughs> Let's get right into our <laughs> special guest of the week. We have Kralo from EA. How are you, Kralo? I'm doing pretty good. Actually, speaking of fake news, I thought this was episode 100, so I think we're going to kill this, and I'll be back in five weeks. <laughs> we'll be running around for a special one, right? Yeah. That'll be interesting. Like, no. Oh, go on, Kralo. Sorry. No, no, no. I'm just saying no, but thanks for having me on. Yeah, yeah. So I, I saw you on the Mudhead podcast last week. Um Two things. Can you sum up what you guys talked about in 30 seconds there? And secondly, can you give us a sentence here for this podcast saying how uh, Mutthead's podcast sucks and ours rocks, basically? <laughs> so the skinny of it was uh, really just talked about my job, kind of things that I do, and uh, ultimately just various topics um granted i'm probably not making much sense because i'm on a few hours of sleep but uh you know i have to say the mudhead podcast i mean I'm, it's it's homegrown man I, I i used to work for mudhead so i cannot say that gut fox but i have to say both you uh the mutman podcast as well as the mudhead podcast was really cool about it at the end of the day is it, it's cool to you guys using this platform to reach out to people and i see a lot of people enjoying it and who knows i might compete in this space and do my own uh -oh. Maybe an official EA Tiburon podcast. I don't know, but we'll see. Well, you guys already we'll need content for that. You guys already tried to get in the podcast ding world what a year or two ago, and it, it, it your guys is flamed out. What's the deal with that? EA doesn't have follow through and can't keep up their podcast with Gibbs and stuff. Um, actually, I think priorities change at the end of the day. Um, you know, hold on one second. Let me let me consult with Craybot over here and let me get a <laughs> political answer for you. Um, you know, and then I'll then I'll talk to. Darth Kralo to my left as oh, well. Okay, Maybe good, good. Like not so political. Uh, no, but um, I, I think it was just more of a change of strategy uh, and and also implementation. At the end of the day, I'll I'll, I'll say this: working at EA, I kind of came in, you know, as a as a community manager as my role, and then as I've kind of been in that role, things just evolve, and you start getting pulled into various other kind of projects based on your expertise. And then, long story short, you know, some things you realize. You kind of have to let go and, and focus on those other things that kind of push the business forward. But in, in my role, it's pushing the business forward is the community. So I think there's a little bit more more wiggle room, more leeway to kind of do some stuff there. So um, I saw on Twitter that Gibbs is dead. Nobody's heard from him in like weeks. Is this true? I've heard the same thing about Jake Stein. Um, but I will tell you that uh, Jake Stein and Gibbs are both alive and well um, at the EA Studios. Um you know, it's kind of interesting because you probably saw a comment earlier. I, I think it was like right around New Year's where I put my main my main account is at Kralo, right? Um, but I've kind of transitioned off to at EA underscore Kralo. But I also put a little, uh, what would you call that? Um, uh, not not a not my thesis, or maybe you you would call it a note thesis on why I decided oh, yeah. to go ahead yep. and make some of that change. But, um, you know, I think... And we could talk about more in the podcast. As I've been in this role, I've seen so many things engaging with the community good, not so good. And you just have a very different perspective about things and, and how you want to engage going forward. And it takes a lot of time, man. I mean, the moment you start engaging in a particular uh, conversation with community members, um, I'll there's times where I spend 30 minutes, I'm going to go through my mentions, try to answer as many as I can. And next thing I know, an hour and a half, two hours later, I'm still responding to things, you know, and going back and forth. So it takes up a lot of time when you think about it. And there's other priorities people have, like families, other things. I just have two dogs and a wife, you know, and they don't want to see me half the time when I come home. So it's all good, man. Yeah, like we're taking <laughs> up your night tonight. Like you, you just left the studio, what, like 45 minutes to an hour ago, got home. You said you took a shower, and now you're doing this podcast with us. So how long have you been working on Madden today? 
Um, so I was working till about 1.30 last night, woke up at like 6.30 this morning, uh, took a nice shower, kind of ironed my clothes, you know, got to look sharp, you know, iron my jeans, um, and then uh, headed to the studio, uh, started working on a whole bunch of things that were kind of due yesterday. Um, and, you know, with Martin Luther King Day, kind of pushed it off to today. Did all that kind of stuff. Left the studio. I think I want to say it was like 6:45. Uh, got home, saw the wife, talked briefly, showed her. You know, she had some projects she needed to do with the shelving because she's still after her car accident, um, still walking okay. You know, I mean, she's. It's been a long recovery, as you can imagine, and we can talk about that personally. Um, what went on there later on, but uh, yeah, then just ate a quick meal. I'm here after this podcast. I got probably two or three hours of work to do as well, um, and then back at it again tomorrow. God dang, that's a long day. Uh, Texas, do you want to get into any any uh, of your questions? Oh, I just want to say I wrote this down, and then I'll throw it to Texas. Like your your things, when you, and you said earlier about the things you've seen. I thought you were gonna get into like a Roy Batty type monologue there from Blade <laughs> Runner, like talk about sea beams <laughs> glittering or something. Uh, but it's just community sentiment, huh? So that's not as exciting as attacking ships on fire. But Texas, what questions do you have? I'm gonna go ahead and ask some um, one of these questions. I know you're, you're on a Mudhead podcast last week, so I don't want to kind of go over the, some of the stuff we, y'all talked about over there. So I, and also on Twitter, like, what's the most tiresome question you get often, so that way we don't ask you on this podcast. <laughs> Uh, I get a few, um, you know, and but it's it's OK. It, it, there just has to be honestly, when you get that many, what it just opens my eyes, that there has to be better ways to be able to communicate that, you know, mm-hmm. and if it's through forums or if it's just quoting someone, then that's great. And um, but I would say a, a lot of questions I get. Let's just use today as an example. Weekend League came out today. I'm uh, sorry. Weekend League Rewards came out today. So typically the questions are, you know, when will I pre you know, why am I not pre-qualified? Uh, which typically the answer there is because when the rewards roll out, they have to kind of roll out. And then once we're done rolling out those rewards and people are get that pre-qualification for the the next, um, you you know, they get pre-qualified for for weekend league. Um, And so you get that one, you get questions on, you know, when are you guys going to update rewards? When are the power ups coming? Um, You know, what are you going to do about NATs? Um, I mean, I can go on and on, but the the main question like today is a good example. Hey, I'll put out a communication that's rolling out. I haven't gotten my reward. Why is that? It's because they're rolling out. And I can talk a little bit about that on the podcast. I think it's important for people to know that ultimately, you know, people expect that when we say 3 p.m. or 2 p.m., and I know the times vary. A lot of that is because we'll probably try to audit something or if there was a holiday, there's kind of a bit of a delay with people coming in, auditing things, making sure people get the right kind of rewards, all that kind of stuff. Then we roll out the job. We schedule the job. It's a cron job. And you schedule out that job. And then ultimately it starts just seeding out. Kind of, it's just doing like customer service grants, right? You know, for all the people that got rewards. And what's interesting about today is that with Weekend League opening early last week, and I kind of communicated about that, we had a lot of people participate. So imagine the amount of people um, that engaged in Weekend League. We had a lot of newcomers playing Weekend League um, this last run. And it's just like the monthly job. It takes a long time. This one takes a long time as well. So hopefully I've heard reports anywhere between like 11 o'clock tonight. That entire job could be done. Um, And then people that Mm. didn't get theirs, I'll be checking tomorrow um, to find out what's going on. And what we do is that we run the job and there's there's a thing where people don't go into that pending that uh, pending reward screen, you know, where you kind of claim. There's some people that actually don't come back to the game on Tuesday to check those kind of things out. And what happens is sometimes those rewards get missed, and it's something that we're looking into. I'll probably be putting out an article on that um, in the near future. So what we do is we, re- we rerun that job again um, for that batch that it might have gotten missed. So that's why people will kind of get rewards trickling in the next day. But we try to get everyone in that time. And you can't run it all at once because if you hammer the servers all at once with this, you know, you just you create so much instability and problems that it you know game integrity is a little more important than than getting all the rewards at once. I know the community it's like it's more important I get it all at once, but at the same time, if you can't get in the game, then yeah, so something has to give a little bit. So why not? Why did you? Well, one, um, what did you call it a con job earlier? Oh no no cron uh, K- uh, C R O N uh, Madden Universe uh, you know it was one funny because I was going back and forth with people and they were like why can't you give it to me now and it's like well we schedule a job well you should be able to just grant it right now and I'm like eh you know 
it's, it's what's hard Kron sometimes. Mean? Is, is EA out here making up words for us, no, trying no, to confuse no. you, us regular you, people? You, you can look uh -huh. it up. No, you can uh -huh. look it up on Wikipedia, man. I didn't say Tron. I said Cron. <laughs> I know you're making up words on us. <laughs> no, it, it doesn't. It's not that big of a deal. Oh, I feel you. Hey, so why don't you spin up more servers then? What's what's the deal with EA servers this year? They're 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 a step down. It feels from seventeen. So the interesting thing about it is um, when you say servers. Can you be a little more descriptive on that? Because, I mean, uh, nowadays I'm always asking for a lot more clarification. Is it like about disconnects or is no, it something no, it's, else? It's like uh, uh, lag and stuff. So, like, I, I don't know. It's it, The internet's a series of tubes to me. You know, servers mm -hmm. process stuff. We play on those servers. And uh, you guys make a lot of those servers. It felt like last year they were better. And this year, not so good. Why is that? Yeah. Um, so... Have you, heard have thing, you heard feedback on that? Um, all year, all year. <laughs> um, you know, where people have talked about disconnects and things like that. I know as of title, uh, Madden title update eight that we put out, we, there's a, like a little comment on the bottom where we talk about online server yep. uh, uh, reliability, stability. And it was just one of the big things that we realized that when people were playing games, um, and I, I can get into this one because it's something that I've, I've talked with our teams after they kind of shared a little bit of information we have a lot more people playing Madden than we've ever had, period. Um, so there's a lot of new people coming to Madden. We have a lot of people that um, are engaging a lot of the other modes uh, than previously. And one of the things that I found was interesting that when we sent this information to the teams to go ahead and start looking at the disconnects and everything like that, uh, Jake Stein was, you know, he, he played a big part in kind of driving that effort. It was really important. You know, I mean, he plays a lot of mutt squads. He plays a lot of online head to head. So that element of the community was very important to him. And he worked with our teams to kind of look at every single element um, when it came down to just server stability. And um, I think he did a... I think the hard part was the community wanted to know like immediately why is this not working? It's it's when you look at servers and you look at the entire online experience, there's so many elements of it, so many touch points that you got to isolate every single one of them to understand what is going on here. Is this working as designed? And my understanding is after all of that that was done, the actual disconnect rate was almost in line with what we were seeing in Madden 17. And I know a lot of people say, I don't believe that. And I get it. But when I looked at the data myself, I was kind of shocked. But what I see, and I, I brought this up, is when you have a lot more to gamble on, like when you have a lot more at stake, not gamble, when you have a lot more at stake online, when you're playing games and something happens and you have a disconnect experience, my personal impression is it just seems a lot more heightened, right? I mean, when you are gunning for rewards and, and having the introduction of weekend league, uh, having the introduction of top 100, all this kind of stuff, I think it adds fuel to the fire and the visibility of issues, and it just brings them up. So that's something that we started observing, and it's like, okay, well, how do we message to people where the errors are coming from? And that's where a lot of those online um, online messaging uh, kind of came into play, which uh, Jake was championing. And, and you know, you'll see now when you play, hey, by the way, you know, we're waiting on the other person, your other opponent who's having some connectivity issues, and we'll attempt to do those reconnects. Um, or you'll see it like, hey, your connection isn't right yeah. there. You know, we're going to kind of restore this. Uh, we, 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 that was deployed for Mutt Squads at the time that we also did that title update. But then we got all those spammy messages, you know, where one person would leave and it kept coming up again and again and again. So we kind of shut that off server side and then turned that back on today. So we'll be monitoring over the next week just people's experiences about that um, so that they're notified. Um, personally, I have a hardwired connection in. I don't have a dedicated server in my house, you know, as some people might think, um, and things like that. But I have not had any disconnect issues. Yeah, but, um, but Kralo, when I'm hardwired. you're a robot. You are the dedicated server. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Kind of yeah. like, you know, like, you know, BB-8 <laughs> and R2-D2. Yeah, like, exactly. There we go. Yeah, the there thing. we go. Just make hey, all the manipulations. So. Hey, Texas, any thoughts on the servers this year and, and the update specifically? I didn't. I haven't played Madden since. I was, I was in San Antonio this past week, so I didn't get a chance to like test anything out with the update and all the other stuff. But <clears throat> the servers this year, at least for me, like I haven't had really any issues with how the game has been. Uh, I know this past weekend, everybody kept saying disconnect was happening at a more frequent rate, rate, but that's probably because everybody was able to play. So guys that typically don't ever qualify were just out there just trying to get those great rewards. So um, I don't know if. 
there's another DC glitch, but yeah, a lot of people were messaging me saying that there was a lot of issues this past weekend week. Yeah, I will. I will say I, I've noticed this like back when I play like in 15 and 16, and, and kind of when the game starts, you, it always feels like on the lower levels you, you have worse connections. But then when you start to get up to like All Man Two, All Man One, when you get really the hardcore guys that definitely have good connections. Back then when it was peer to peer. It felt like that the connections were fine then, but like once you got to the when you're on the lower levels, it felt like you had more disconnects or, or more choppier connection. But now this year with the dedicated servers and in, in 17 and 18, that shouldn't make a difference. Your opponent should make a difference, Tex. It really shouldn't, but I mean, obviously there's some things out there that affect it, um, but that we can't that we that can't control on, on our own end. Uh, with um, yeah. maybe going from different like traveling links and then other and ISPs, maybe throttling stuff here and there, but it should be better. But I haven't, like I said, I haven't had any issue with it this year. So for at least on my end, I haven't really gotcha. been annoyed yeah. by they, it. But I still, I do see people complaining to me about it in my comment yeah. section or my or my Twitch or my YouTube chat whenever I'm streaming. Yeah, there's a there's a lot. Honestly, it's it's kind of it's funny because you know for me back before I started working at EA. You know, my world as a game changer was, okay, you know, it's peer-to-peer, kind of like you were saying, Gut Fox, or, okay, they have dedicated servers now. What does my experience look like? But now being on this side and just talking with some of the people that really look into these kind of issues, it's a really complicated issue because there's so many factors and so many variables that it's hard to isolate. Um, I had a good friend of mine um, where he would actually play Mutt Squads, and he could never finish a game. Um, and And... This was he was living at Texas at the time and he just moved to Utah Uh, when he was playing in Texas. He was on a Wi-Fi connection when he moved to, you know, um, when he moved to Utah, he, you know, got patched in, didn't have any kind of issues. So it's not to say that just, you know, doing hardwire solves the issue. I do know a lot of people that have Wi-Fi connections Um, there. You know, when you think about Wi-Fi, there's a lot of things that can interrupt that bandwidth, depending on what kind of frequency you are on, depending, you know, what other kind of competing electronics are around you. Um, That's why personally in my office, I have like three computers in here, a laptop, a tablet, all connected. I I just don't like playing on Wi-Fi because there's so much that can be going on uh, that can kind of reduce the, the, you know, the data throughput that could cause connection issues. But at the, at the end of the day, um, it doesn't mean that our team, just because that's one element of the things that we're seeing, it doesn't mean that we can't still continue to look at things at EA. And okay. I and I know that, you know, going to 19, we are looking into how do we continue to better this experience? Because right now with Mutt, everything is just online, right? And with more modes and more experiences, you bring in Mutt squads, you bring in, you know, head to head, you bring in weekend league, you're putting a tax on all these new modes. It's something that, you know, we have to continue to invest in our infrastructure and, and make things better for the for the end consumer. So, Kralo, you know how um, I I love to take people out of context, but you just said that uh, there are more modes and then Mad 19, it was in the same sentence. So that's going to be the headline of this this podcast. And so I'm expecting <laughs> some sort of big change to Mad 19 or else um, me and Texas are, are going to throw that back in your face. Does that sound good? That is fine if you want to go ahead and digitize it, you know, and just like put this in front of that and make it sound good. It's all good, man. Okay, it's all good, good, good. good. I will say though, I I will say that if you want any information, um, you know, on Madden 19, make sure to follow at EA Sports underscore Mutt, um, you know, for all your future content updates. Uh, that is my kind of like my Craybot response. Um, so, you know, hopefully when we get around that time, they'll talk about it and all that kind of fun stuff. But, um, you know, I, I really am excited about, um, you know, kind of where we've come from from playing back in 10 to where we are now there's still room for it to improve yeah so like you said there's more people playing this year than ever before and that's madden and mutt in general right Mm-hmm. okay so, yeah. so so more people playing this year which is great i've i've noticed like in previous years i noticed creators complaining about views and i don't see that much this year so it does feel like there's more uh, at least from my end um, and like uh, what I've heard from other creators, I'm not going to call them out individually, but um, that, that they're doing well. And so more people are playing, more people are interested in the content, more people are interested in Mutt and stuff. Now, getting back to those servers, not to hit it on again, this is the last time I'm going to bring it up. But are you guys, do you guys, when you see this increased player base, do you start revving up a lot more servers? Is it basically like um, you can't, is it kind of like Amazon where you can just ask them for more servers? Or do you guys, you guys have your own servers there at uh, EA or Microsoft or whatever you guys use? I just go buy one at Best Buy, you know, or just wherever and just, <laughs> just spin it up for you. Say, hey, here you guy, here you go, you know. So it's like, hey, here's here, here you guys go. It makes a lot of sense. Um, no, so I mean, honestly, 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He goes, expand. Hey, let's go. Um, but uh, the answer to that question is, I really don't know. How, this is my first year working at ADA. I've only been there about six months. I don't exactly know what we do, um, you know, when that happens. But to your question, though, Gut Fox, one of the things that I have been asking our teams that we need to do a better job of for our core. And when I say core, I'm not talking about hardcore. I'm talking about the core, you know, people that play cough, cough, <clears throat> you know, a uh, long shot, or if they play CFM, or if they play Madden Ultimate Team, or if they play Play Now, is how do we communicate to our core? What are the things that we are doing for them to make the game better? And I think that that's something that, since I've been here for the last six months, seeing things over the holiday around communication, um, that myself and some of the producers in the studio realize we need to do a better job of that. You know, we, we notice in our, in our notes, we fix this, but why? You know, we need to do a better job of explaining why are we actually designing the game this way? Why are we fixing things this way? There's topics out there the community want to know about. For example, well, you guys got a lot of people on there. What are you doing to preserve server integrity um, you know, and, and online stability going forward? And I think that's a great question. I think that um, I would like eventually for us to be able to answer some of those kind of questions. And we need to get to that place where our, you know, we can get that information, accurately share that with the community in a format that is easy and, and digestible for them. So this is this is a longer term project that I'm working on um, from a community standpoint. But um, yeah, you know, I think uh, I wish I had an answer for you, but I do know there are teams looking at online service stability um, and making sure that you have a great online experience. I got you. Texas, do you want to ask your next question? Uh, yes, I do. I guess we'll stick with a lot of the topics going on right now with like, a lot of people playing this game. Uh, so if people are, if people are playing this game this year, how come a lot of the modes that we got last year, such as like Friday Night Draft or Tuesday Night Drafts, are being instituted back in to kind of increase more engagement? Yeah, so... And, and, and that, you know, to add on that, sorry if you can answer this, why did you get rid of the free yeah. draft mode too? Yeah, so um, I really wish I could answer that because that's a little bit before my time. I don't have any any details on that. And when I when I answer some of these questions, you guys both know I started EA back in August. So mm -hmm. a lot of the design decisions that have occurred, um, I probably wasn't really privy of. Um, I do understand, we, we, we've, I've heard a lot of people ask me that, like, why'd you take away some of these kind of modes and things like that? What I've been told and what I'm learning is the team is always trying to innovate and kind of come up with new modes, new experiences, do different things and be creative. And sometimes that helps us. And other times, it, it, I'm not saying, even saying it hurts us. It's just something that we see the community doesn't actually like or appreciate. So that's when we have to kind of look at things and say, okay, how do we do this a little bit differently? And I always go back to like the most feared promo. You know, like the most feared promo, they were trying to do something a little bit different with different kind of masters. But when you actually looked at the path of completing some of these players, it did not make sense. Um, you know, I had community members and game changers come to me saying this is very imp it's impossible to finish this card It, it, it feels like I'm, I'm locked in doing this that or the other and then take that feedback and say how do we feed this into the next program? So, you know, I've heard a lot of people asking like why this year have you? Um, given up on mutt drafts, you know, and and why is why are the tickets so expensive? And I think at the end of the day people just really enjoy that mode um, people really, you know, like kind of playing it because that's they, they like the idea of the draft. You know, why do we go five tickets? I don't have the information for that one. You know, I've asked, and I think it's just more of a strategy shift of kind of getting people more to play other kind of things like weekend league and be a little more competitive. And, you know, I mean, like I said, there's a lot of things that I will answer that I can within the time I've been there, but stuff on why we moved away from other things from last year, I don't really know. And, and um, I can always dig into that if you guys want me to. Okay. Yeah, because, I mean, that's that's really interesting. I mean, from – I never really did drafts or draft champions, but I know they always got good views, and that's really the only metric I have on my side of it. You guys obviously have much better metrics than we do on who plays what. Um, but it seemed like it was very popular with, like, a casual crowd. So do you feel, in your personal opinion, that it's good that Madden's going in a more competitive direction than, than really catering to casual people? I think it, it, my thing at the end of the day is you need to cater to everyone. So, um, you know, my job at EA is I'm, I'm the community manager for Madden, not Madden Ultimate Team, just Madden. Um, in that, 
rolls in Madden Ultimate Team. It runs in competitive. Um, it rolls in uh, CFM, um, all these kind of modes. And, and I'll be the first to tell you guys, you know, when you kind of take on a role where your experience has always been Madden Ultimate Team and then all of a sudden you're looking at the entire franchise, it's a bit overwhelming. You know, and I even talked with Rex and Clint about this last week, you know, where we were going through some of the sentiment and I'm like, I, I had an opportunity to say, guys, going into 19, you know, I, I, I need, you know, going into the rest of 18 and going into 19, I kind of need some more help, you know, and understanding kind of some of the issues that are facing this group. I see them all the time. I'm capturing them all the time, but where are we going with this? How do we get these addressed? How do we get these things fixed? So uh, it's, I think competitive is an important part of our business with esports. We all get that, but I, I, I do know there's producers that are looking at the game holistically on how do we make the best Madden in every type of mode. And and I know that some modes, the community gets it, it's been neglected and it's trying to find that kind of balance, you know, and I think at the end of the day, our CFM group, you know, I know they feel very neglected and that's mm-hmm. something that, you know, I, I, I believe it or not, there's a lot of people that play CFM and it's, we need to look at that and say, well, how do we go ahead and address this? I mean, they've, 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 They've not gotten the support that they've wanted for years. You know, what are some of like the big things? Because they have a laundry list of maybe, you know, 100 items. What are like the top three to five things that we can really tackle that move the needle and make that difference? And that's the hard thing that when you're looking at all these kind of things and you're building the game, you know, not only for competitive is how do you build all of these things with these resources that focus in various areas. It's a very challenging task, you know, and me going through the development cycle and seeing what these guys have to deal with every single title update, you know, like, well, this couldn't make it, but we're going to push it out for this next one because of this reason or that reason. It's interesting. It's, it's very eye opening, man. This job has been um, more than, more than I ever anticipated, um, you know, from just the stuff that I do, but it, it's been very eye opening. Uh, as a game changer, I thought I knew a lot, but I didn't know as much as I do now, which is is kind of crazy. So, what do you think is the biggest? Uh, well, actually, Texas, I'll let you go ahead and but anything you want to ask. Well, I was, I was gonna go back on like the mud drafts thing. So it's been a month since like we got it updated, obviously, and um, I think the last one was was December fifth. And mm-hmm. with the mode still, like I feel like even though you already talked about about the mode being neglected, like with that one. That one was kind of like a casual player's like, hey, man, I know a lot of people like, yo, I'm going to get mad and just play Mud Dress since they can't really compete online with certain players. Uh, but with the rewards that we have over there in that mode and then on top of that, the cost of entry to it, it seems like – and then them not updating it as frequently as like they do like other Mud content that like it's – didn't take off as well as it probably should have this year with it being updated to more rounds and had a lot more potential, I believe to make it an actual like main place to play over like weekend league and other stuff like that. I know content creators loved it, you know, and, um, and yeah, I'm not trying to speak of it like in the past tense, like it's Mm -hmm. gone. Um, I just know, you know, like KK, um, you know, he's, he, you know, last year I looked a lot of his videos. Um, he was big in mutt drafts and I understand that, um, that, that's the thing at the same time, we got to make sure too, that we're building a game that is something that our content creators enjoy, you know, being a part of as well, you know, and that, that when, when you open up that, that there's a lot of things involved there of like, you know, what is it, the things they like, you know, they like packs, you know, they like certain modes, like doing certain things. And it's, you know, how do we build a Madden at the end of the day that caters to everyone, content creators, you know, the casual, the competitive, um, but yeah, you know, I mean, the, the you do look at, at much drafts. We haven't had an update, you know, from the December time frame. That's a common question I do get to text uh, mm-hmm. from a lot of people. I've talked to that team. Um, I believe that team, um, you know, we're, I, I believe the team that does a lot of that kind of stuff is, resides in, on the competitive side of things. And I know those guys are very, very busy um, right now, to be honest with you, with the club championship games. I mean, last year we went from eight club championship games um, now to like almost all 32. So the amount of workload, you know, when you're doing these kind of events and representing clubs, it's a lot on that team. So they got to prioritize, right? They got to prioritize the fixes. They got to prioritize, you know, the salary cap. Uh, anytime a new card comes out, you know, making sure that the salary cap is right. Um, and that team is is growing, you know, and, and, and it takes every year going through things to realize where do you need to show up? You know, where do you need to go ahead and hire more people? Where do you need to go ahead and, and tweak the processes or 
move on from certain things. But um, yeah, I hear you. I, I hear you and the community loud and clear on that one. And it's something that I've brought to that team. Um, I don't know when the update will come. I know that they're working on it. Uh, I'm thinking with all the content that we have going on, uh, don't quote me on this. I'm thinking it might be right around the Super Bowl time frame, just based off all the workload that those teams are doing, getting ready for that big, um, you know, Madden Club championship happening down here in Orlando. Gotcha. See, that's more optimistic than me. I'm thinking the next one's going to be when the next DC tournament is. Yeah, and you know, <laughs> I don't think there is one. Yeah, tax, right? I, I hear you. There's, there's no yeah, more. It's I, all. It's all. Everything's no. on salary cap now. Yeah. It's not one more major tournament for yeah. for draft champions or mud drafts. Yeah, but see, that's the mentality though. That that's the thing though. It's like the community yeah. has come to expect. Oh, uh, they'll update it when the competitive need it to be updated. And I think that that's something that, um, I think I think it's a fair assessment. There's a lot of people in the community that feel that the competitive dominates everything, but it. I don't. I, I, I don't I think people think it dominates way more than it than it does. Um, I couldn't get that one out there um, because when I talk to the gameplay guys, they are doing things and fixing things from a competitive perspective, but a lot of core gameplay fixes are just for Madden in general, you know, and um, when there are issues brought up from a competitor, you know, that gets thrown into the mix, and we do seriously take a look at that. But there's a lot of other things that we've just seen that are gameplay. I mean, they're gameplay fixes. Gameplay fixes do impact competitive, but they also impact the casual competitive play. So it's how, how you slice it and dice it, I think. Yeah, so so that is interesting to hear that. Like, we've gotten a lot more players in 18, like you said. Are you guys on, like, a hiring spree? Why does it seem like Madden is turning up all this money but it still seems like the same size team as it was in like 15. Um, I, you know, I don't know if it's, well, I can't speak for when I was in 15. That's actually when I started as a game changer. I could say I've seen a lot of new faces since I've been at EA. Um, so maybe well, that's, isn't that, isn't that due to like, team. with like contractors, you got to lay them off for like three months before you can rehire them. Isn't that like a, a weird thing that EA does? Um, well, they have their own contract thing. I mean, a lot of people are aware of it, you know, from Mug Guru when he went ahead. And I think a lot of people that do come into EA kind of come at that contract level um, or contractor level. I did post some some job openings at EA. They're looking for a couple of um, assistant producers and also a game analyst. Uh, one of them, I think, is a full time and the other two say contractor on there. Um, and, you know, it's one. Of, yeah. So it's I think contractor is more of an opportunity for people to come in. You kind of test their their experience um, and how they fit, and then go from there. You know, and sometimes contracts vary. They can be short, three months. Sometimes they can actually be like a year. Um, it just de- depends on the team and whatnot. I got gotcha. you. It just it's just kind of a a weird thing that EA has with that 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 uh, contractors when they're such a big company. But I can I can see why from EA's standpoint why they do it to um, in order to give people tryouts and stuff before bringing them on full-time and even more security but it just kind of it feels weird so i think rex said texas remind me how many do you it was like over 100 people work on madden tex did he say that or not he said i think he said that was was around that lot because a lot of people like a lot of there's a lot there's a lot of people yeah i don't know the exact number either there's a lot of people. But it, it just feels like there's always, like like you said, like uh, them working on this competitive stuff, and that's the reason Mutt Drafts have to take a, a back seat to it. But why is that the way it is? Like, can't they do them both? Like, how hard is it when you're churning out $100 million a year in, in revenue plus to, to hire a few more people, one dude to keep Mutt Drafts updated? Yeah. So, you know, that's always a that's a, that's a good question. And I think it's a good perception because people think that, OK, because Ultimate Team makes all of this money, it goes specifically to that team. You know, when I worked at, at uh, Curse or I worked at T-Mobile uh, and Curse is actually a good example. When I worked over at Mutthead, we would work on projects specifically that Mutthead did. But at the end of the day, when the revenue came in, it went to the whole company. Right. And it's the responsibility of the company to kind of figure out where that goes. And, you know, that's when you actually have your budget planning meetings, um, you know, where everyone kind of comes to the table, um, you know, and says, OK, you know, our team does X amount of work this year. We need X amount of headcount. You got to justify that. You know, you got to go ahead and prove that out. And I think that's that's something that every team does. They do it every year. Um, this isn't just an EA thing. This is really more of a business thing, um, you know, f- based on my experience for 17 years and working in different corporations and other you know, big businesses, um, 
you know, when the money is made, it ultimately goes to like that bottom line. And then it's up to those teams to kind of assess, okay, these are the things that we're working on the following year. Um, you know, this is what we're actually going to need from a headcount perspective and kind of budget that, you know, I mean, it's easy to say that from a community perspective, you can look, you could look at me and say, you know what, Kralo, um, your team is understaffed because you're not responding to every single tweet. You're not responding to every Mudhead PM. You're not responding to all that kind of stuff. But my role isn't just that. It's just one segment of that. Um, and there's so much more that I'm involved in and what I do that, you know, the, the perception there is just hire more people. But it's like, yeah, but is is the best use of the time spent answering everybody or is it better – spending more time strategically thinking about how can we reach the masses through a more structured communication. So there, there's just, there's a lot of things that I think about on a day-to-day -day basis that, that people think that it should happen this way when the reality is there's just a lot more other factors that, that come into play. If that so, makes any sense. So in this budget meeting, I imagine Rex going in there, meeting Andrew Wilson <laughs> and, and getting basically making it rain hundred dollar bills. Cause that's exactly what Madden does. And be like, give me what I want. Why, why can't he get more and I mean, like, and like you said, how busy you are at EA working till one thirty at night, waking up at six, and now you got a podcast, and you're going to be working again till past midnight, past one tonight on your community sentiment report, which will I'll, I'll ask what that is here in a little bit. Yeah. Um, like, why wouldn't? What, doesn't it just make sense to hire another you or like a junior you to to help take off some of that workload? Why are you justifying your twelve hour day work days? Hey, I have a junior. She, I'm just kidding. Um, no, I, I have a, a coordinator that works with me and she also uh, works um, on NBA Live. Um, you know, it's it's so, really not, oh, go ahead. Uh, I was just gonna say, uh, never mind, I'll let you finish, then I'll, then I'll, I'll put my snide <laughs> remark about no, NBA Live. No, go ahead, go ahead, no, go, go, go ahead, go ahead, go okay, ahead. Okay, okay, here, let me get out of the way. So, your podcast, your the, podcast. Yeah, yeah, it, it, like, so NBA Live, why did that need to be brought back and why did you need to use Madden money on NBA Live? Like, isn't that just kind of like, throwing bad money after bad money it already died once like can't can't you just let it, it you stop beating it it's dead already i actually i think uh believe it or not um i think nba live has done a really good thing um you know i think the their engagement model with with members um it's just the career aspect of building your character personally i, I love what they've done there and i'm just talking as a consumer it would be so cool if something like that was brought to madden i, I love the concept with nba live i think there's a lot of people out there that play 2k that have given nba live a chance and they actually enjoy it um does nba live have a lot you know a lot more to to kind of work and do totally you know they're they're kind of in that state of rebuilding and reestablishing the brand but i do believe they're on the right track and i'm i'm I look at that team and I think they're doing some pretty cool stuff, man. Um, at the end of the day, you got to start somewhere. You got to start somewhere and you can't just give up. You know, I mean, well, you got to start I'm, somewhere. I'm shaking my head pretty hard right now. What what they should do going forward is just take those <laughs> NBA live people and just put them straight onto Madden. I mean, they're essentially using the Madden money. Just bring them in. Bring them in and get a mini Kralo, get a guy doing draft champions. I'm sure you can find plenty of roles for those people. You know, get another coder here, put another game mode in. Yeah, so instead of this NBA live stuff, yeah, just ditch it. Get, bring it back to the man. That's 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 the community <laughs> sentiment report for this week from this podcast. Texas. I second that. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, like, I mean, I'm not too sure what the engagement is over there in that game, but I feel like the game that has more people playing it needs more care than the one that doesn't. So should we take all the people off Madden and put them on FIFA? Mm. Or do you want yeah, to move to a different studio though? <laughs> yeah, here, here's the thing, Kralo. Uh, here's Cooper the thing, Kralo. Actually, really nice. <laughs> <You> wanna... <laughs> really nice man. Have right, you yo. seen the yeah, Vancouver? No, uh, that's, no that's I... Alaska, that Canada. Which one is that? That's a Canada one. It's actually yeah. pretty cool. Okay. I've I've never been. I'm looking forward to go there eventually. Um, Corey, uh, my buddy Corey, uh, who used to be a game changer, he actually works over there and uh, he does a lot of the community management. For a lot of mobile games and also FIFA, UFC, all that kind of stuff. He's a busy man. He needs a uh, a mini Kralo, um or mini Corey. But um, yeah, I hear you, man. It's the the funny thing is, at the end of the day, every company deals with this. I saw this at T-Mobile um, a lot on a lot of projects. Um, you know, the contractor thing got Fox. Uh, when I worked at T-Mobile, I had a lot of new projects that I did. We hired contractors after that contract was over with. We kind of moved on. You know, the job was there. It was done. We moved on. Um, you know, how EA does contracting, it's a little bit different, um, you know, and I'm still learning about that. Um, but we do hire our contractors. You can talk to Mole. You know, he's full-time now. 
So it's good to good to yeah, have but you, you do. But you essentially work contractors like full time employees. You don't give them specific projects. Like wasn't Mole just brought on to be like? Well, actually, I don't know. I, I'm not. I'm, I guess I'm not that interested you, in con. You, you can, I'm not you that can have, interested you can in have them at, on 99 and just bring it back on 100 and we'll talk. You know, episode 100. Oh right, yeah, yeah. We'll bring you. Back. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. No, so <laughs> like. All right, so obviously Madden brings in a lot. I don't know. I'm not going to beat the NBA live horse too long, but but your, your retort earlier was a great one about why not just move the Madden guys to FIFA. Well, it's because Madden's generating like $100 million a year, and you're not just going to throw that away is my stupid retort back. So um, I want to hear what the, what is this con- community sentiment report? Yeah, so um, you know, every week, um, and I, I talked about a little bit of this on the Mudhead podcast, um, you know, every week uh, – Oh, I you, kinda, did, you did. We don't have to. T- we don't have to hit it again. Then, if you already talked about it there. No, no. But I'm. I'm. I mean, the thing is, it's different audiences, right? At the end of the day, so whoever listens at the Mutt Mid podcast may not listen on on the Mudhead podcast, and vice versa. So um, now, granted, you guys might say, actually, you know, we are the Mutt Mid podcast, and all <laughs> of our guys, you know, like we created this market. So you know, yeah. Um, well, the, we, no, we just, like, we just uh, have the most well informed audience ever. So I'm sure they already know. This because they also listen to Mudhead and uh, Chewy and and uh, they they take care of them over there, but they send them right back to us. I hope you know you ma- massage you go. their backs a little bit. But yeah, with smart people and that are well informed, listen to both podcasts. But go on, Kralo, sorry. And and, it, and it's great when your podcast and their podcast are together. It's like just it's like a smorgasbord of podcasts, you oh, know, yeah. of great personality and talent. It's a lot of. I actually enjoy the banter between you and Tex and uh, Chewy and Slump. It's pretty funny. Um, I enjoy but uh, yeah, so like, you know, my sentiment report, basically what I do is um, it's something that I kind of try to submit every Monday or Tuesday to the teams. And it goes to a lot of people in the organization where, you know, of course you have your executive summary, what happened the last week. And then we look at kind of the things that were the positive conversation drivers, and the negative conversation drivers, um, you know, when I kind of highlight specifically what those are, we look at various campaigns that we've done and how well they've performed in the market, you know, from like a social media perspective, uh, influencer elevation, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, we, we, I put in there community, community, que- a section I'm going to try to do is like community questions. Cause I get a lot of questions from the community that maybe I can't get answers from that people are looking for. Uh, we do recommendations from the community, um, you know, like community is recommending about NAT duplicates, right? What can we do about NAT duplicates? Um, Is there something that we can do about a token conversion set? Is there an opportunity to do something different with playoffs and add this kind of set? So a lot of that feedback I'll take, um, you know, that I get from the community looking on social, butthead, you know, Reddit. Uh, Also some of the game changers. I have a Slack group um, where I have some of the game changers, some community members where we kind of talk a little bit about some of the stuff that's, you know, what's going on in the community and just people that I've known um, and you know, we really just, I, I take that information. I, I put it in a format that's succinct to the point, send that over to our internal teams every Monday or Tuesday. And then what I do is I actually follow up with the teams. I started doing this follow up with specific teams. We actually look at the sentiment report. It's like, okay, some of these bugs that we're seeing, are they going to get fixed? You know, um, like is gunslinger going to get, you know, the gunslinger deep ball, is that going to get fixed or, you know, the CPU power moves. Um, you know, they weren't working ball carry moves that got fixed in the last title update scum kick. When is that going to get addressed? Got, you know, fixed in the last update. And it's kind of really driving to that and kind of building a systematic process around that. So it's something that, um, during, I'm not saying during the heavy part of the season, cause we're still in that, but, um, you know, it's start, you know, I would always start on Sunday night, start working on that kind of building the template to it. Uh, I'll, for the most part, all day Monday with all the meetings that I'm going through, kind of trying to consolidate, get that information there. And then on Tuesday, get out there to publish the rest of the teams and then back at it, collecting the feedback, the sentiment for the next week. Um, And then having the conversations with the people in the studio, bringing that kind of stuff up. Yeah, I gotcha. So you mentioned CPU power moves. Was pass rushing broken prior to the patch? Is that what you said? No, I mean, like, uh, I meant to say CPU ball carrier moves. Uh-oh. I think there was, like, an issue where um, people that were playing certain modes where the CPU wasn't sprinting and things like that, things that we got to address there. Um, but, you know, it's it's all of those kind of things. And even bringing up things that we haven't fixed and trying to understand, are we going to go ahead and get this addressed, you know, in this patch or the next patch? What are some of the complications and things like that? I got gotcha. you. Texas, any questions? Well, if you got a, I got, I got a few uh, suggestions you can put in your community sentiment report. Let's hear them. Go ahead. All right, right, all right. So one of them, I got an idea how to fix power upsets. Whoa. 
right? Shoot for it. Big news, right? All right, so we know how power-up sets are, where we got to put in lower overall version of the player plus the higher overall to get a nat version back. And since this year, y'all like giving limited time cards power because I don't know why. I don't know who in the office likes pissing people off like that. Because <laughs> every single week, we keep saying, stop giving cards a power says limited time cards, and they just keep doing it. I, I, don't, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. And then with y'all doing that uh, Sean Taylor the thing this past weekend, um, that is what I think would fix it. But you can also sell other things as well. So for those that don't know, Sean Taylor got an upgrade. If he had the 95 master set complete, uh, they ended up giving you a team token or no, a Sean Taylor token to collect for 97. Why is it was that like prepping for or trying to like foreshadowing of maybe something in the future coming out for the power up sets kind of to let people power up their lesser version to the limited time version stats that's nat or that's just something I decided to do because it I think right it, thing. yeah, I think um it was something that you know Jake really championed a lot of that effort, you know, and I think we saw a lot of community a lot of community feedback, you know that i I grinded and I spent all this time trying to get mutt master where are we going to go from here? You know, and I think that, you know, Jake reviewed a lot of that data and said, I think I got an idea solved for this. And, and, you know, he vetted this out with some of the game changers. He, he talked to some community members on his own and kind of really drove and championed this particular thing that I think was, a, a, I think it was a, a, a great success overall. Um, and that's the thing too, you got to keep in mind is that when we try new things like this, it's we have to gauge how well did it go, how well did it do, and are there opportunities to kind of integrate this into other things? You know, not to say that something like this would go over to power ups. And I agree from a community perspective, it's been a bit of a pain point. Um, and it's it, the, the interesting thing, it's been of a bit of a pain point, but it's also something that we see that some data that there are, there are groups of people that participate this rather frequently and they actually enjoy it so there's people that don't like it there's people that do like it we're trying new things we see things that okay maybe we may need to redesign this you know in the future you know or maybe it's something that you know what it just didn't work out let's just go ahead and scrap it and i think that's the thing that what i've noticed this year with madden i believe there's been a lot of innovation this year and a lot of trying of different things we saw a lot of that start last year Right. When all of a sudden they started coming out with different kinds of sets and we had the ultimate tickets and the, that free spirit of trying different things. And some of that carried over into this year. And I think our team is they're constantly looking at ways to go ahead and try different things. Um, some have been successful. Some maybe not so much. You know, like I, I, to me, I thought Snow Beast was successful. I thought it was something really cool something very different we talked about this on the mudhead podcast you know we didn't do ghost of madden you know you could say you know if we did snow beast and we actually ended up calling the snow beast the limited cards um you know ghost of madden would the perception have been different who knows we really don't but what we learned from all that is okay let's get better at communicating these things if we decide to go ahead and do a program change and we're not bringing that part of the program and let's try something different. But also, if there, if we built a brand experience around this, and that's what I, 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 I keep bringing up is that when you're developing content and you're creating something year in and year out, you're not just in the business of developing content. You're in that business of developing an experience. And if you become attached to that experience and you love that experience, which a lot of people love Ghost of Madden, they're going to act not favorably when you make that change. And it's something that I think you know we always need to keep in mind of, okay, when we change these things, what's going to be that reaction, that perception, you know, I mean, we can talk about, um, we can talk right now. I can see this conversation going a lot of places, even talking about team of the years, you know, those players changing positions, you know, and, and doing that kind of change and saying, okay, these players played in one position, um, you know, Harrison, he played free safety, but he was also played strong safety this year. You know, look at Aaron Donald's a defensive tackle, but he also played, you know, at a left end position. You look at Joey Bosa, he kind of went on both sides, you know? So if, if, I see the frustration in making those kind of changes, but I also see the innovation that goes into play of like, how do you bring that type of variety and keeping players fresh and trying different things? And it's a tough place to be because sometimes you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. And it's, it, you got to learn, you got to, you got to try things and make the mistakes. And I know it makes people upset, but you know what? Last year we didn't, 
do as much. And the complaint was it's the same recycled content again and again. So it's it's like, how do we find that balance? And maybe that's a question I have for you guys, right? Because um, I know you guys are always asking me questions. Like, how do you find that balance in that space with all these competing demands? It's like the community wants you to be creative, yet when you be creative, they're very upset. And then, you know, if you try something different um, and it's a hit, then great, you know, but if, if you don't bring back this old program, then it's not. And it's like, if you try to bring all that in one space, you cannot do it all. It's just not physically possible with time, resources, all that kind of stuff. So I know I said a lot there, but I think that's just been just stuff I've been thinking about yeah. and would love for you guys to yeah. give some feedback on that. So, for real. so yeah, I'll just make I'll just make one comment. Kralo, you, you, you could see where we were going to go with a lot of the stuff because we shared our agenda with you beforehand. I'm just saying, just <laughs> saying we that may have been fixed. I'm not you, you aren't psychic for our next <laughs> questions. Um, but Texas, you, go on. Yeah, I did see the Joey Bosa thing. And I saw <laughs> yeah. that here, but, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But, so, but the thing is, but the thing is, like, let's be honest, the power, you know, we talk, we're talking yeah. about power ups, you know, we're talking, about, you know, Mutt master upgrade. And then you start thinking about. You're yeah, trying. No, this I, is I really. Mess with you. This I was is a program. Yes, yeah, don't mess with me anymore, Gut Fox. I can't <laughs> deal with it. <laughs> Tex, go ahead and ask what you can say. What you're gonna say? All right. So yeah, with, with the Bosa thing, um, the reason like I, innovation, all that stuff. We all like to you know, try things, and if it fails, it fails. Uh, I think people more so like that. But with like the out of position stuff, since a lot of our team this year is Nat, we kind of like the structure of certain players being locked in. And so when you drop out of position players like that left and Aaron Donald. And you drop a right in Bosa, now I got to change my team up, but Arn Marty kind of stuck with certain cards at those positions. And so That's I take those positions for those specific players. And then because I don't know, it might have just been, might have just been me. I see a lot of guys play guys out of position. But when I played my Bosa, who was at, at left end, who was a left end at right end, he kept getting pancaked. And mm-hmm. so I can't if I if I get the ninety five Bosa and put him back at or ninety six after to power him up and put him at uh, left end, I got to run the risk of him not playing as well as his other card did for me that's a little overall and so like with the innovation I mean, we're here for it you just if you gave us an option to put him at left and right since he played both positions same thing with harrison smith if there was a set that you could power him up into where it's like all right then pick which position you want so that way my harrison smith doesn't overlap with the strong safety i already have yeah no that that's great feedback tex and you know to today i put out a communication on mudhead about hey you know um the team of the team of the year players are going to probably get a possible power up at the end of the week. And I had asked a question in a meeting and said, Hey, you know, uh, the power up. So they consistent with like the new player. And then the answer was yes. So I communicated that out. But what I, I did that not to even jump and say, you know, I have some concerns here. I kind of wanted to gauge and just see what the community says and see what kind of solutions they have to then go back to the team. Cause it's definitely hot on my radar. I mean, I, I see, I see a lot of stuff, you know, every single day. And this one I know was going to be a hot topic for members of the community. So I've just been monitoring it to go back to the team and say, okay, look, you know, we did it with free safety, you know, and I'm not saying this was the exact rationale why. I saw when they did free safety and went to strong safety, I saw the power up changed. I'm like, okay. You know, community com- community people were asking me, well, you know, he's he's played free safety his whole entire life. So I did some research. I'm like, actually, you know, based off some of the, the stuff that we looked at, he played strong safety this year, and that makes sense. Okay, cool. Now, with seeing a team of the year and all these type of changes, you know, it's made me ask questions as well. Of like, okay, I'm really curious now how the community is going to react to this because, you know, now that I'm seeing this as well, um, this is interesting. You know, it's, it's going to be an interesting conversation that we're going to have to have because there's people that are like, I've really built my team this way. And I, I now I've invested coin in this particular player and I'm forced to move into another position where maybe I have an NAT over there and that doesn't make much sense. So I understand all that concern, um, you know, and, and I'll definitely take that back to the team. Um, it's something that, again, it, it has been brought up today, and I am looking into it. Okay, quick fix also, oh, real yeah, quick. Um, you can make the power-ups auctionable, and we won't hear to complain anymore. <laughs> Just yeah, and, and yeah, and that's and that's feedback that I've gotten and I've shared with the team, you know, and that's for them to ultimately decide mm-hmm. how they go ahead and do that. Um, it's, you know, at the end of the day, I, I've heard that feedback. I've heard about, you know, at least making them tradable or, or doing something a little bit different. I get it. Um, I understand a lot of people put a lot of coin into that. And, um, you know, so the question here is like, can we do something for this year? Is it something that we need to go ahead and reassess? 
um, do differently for future programs, you know, uh, this year or in years to come. But I hear you loud and clear on that one. It's it's definitely something I've heard time and time again, and I have relayed that feedback. So on those power ups, the guy that originally thought this up, uh, is this exactly how he imagined it going? You have to ask that guy. Okay, I don't know who, <laughs> because it it doesn't feel like this was well thought out or well imagined go, like in, in the way this thing has turned out with how expensive they are to do with people just general frustration with them now a lot of cards are getting red chems and i like that i don't i didn't i didn't love that they were exclusive to nat cards earlier it just feels like power-ups was a great idea but it the execution of it left a lot lacking I, I agree. I, I agree with you in that I, I think it's a phenomenal idea. It's just I think judging from community feedback, there has been a lot of questions on, you know, you know, why can't limited time players, you know, be used? There's been a lot of questions on like, well, you know, why are you like, like you said, why are limited time players actually, you know, getting upgrades when they're actual power ups? Um I've seen all that, and I I yeah. totally get it. I, I I understand it, and it's something that. Go ahead. Do you think we'll get them in nineteen? I don't know. Okay. You know, I think um, it's something that. No that's a tough. Yeah. It, it it. Per personally, I think the concept. I I love the concept. I I in. I think that I look at Madden Mobile and I look at their concept of, you know, you Madden Mobile, you know, it's funny because I, I see a lot of comparisons like, man, Mad, you know, Madden Mobile has all this great content, you know, and, and Mutt doesn't. Madden Mobile just operates on a very different type of model, a very different type of business model, a very type of content model than than our teams do that. It's it's separated for a very for a very particular reason. But you know, when you look at the stuff that they did on mobile where you have an NAT player, you've invested all that, but then you can take that player, right? And you can go ahead and put that player into another player so that you, and, and you, you pay in, and if it, whether it's at a fraction of a cost or something, um, you know, I think at the end of the day, that consumer feels like, you know what? I went ahead and uh, I spent some money here and granted, if I'm going to put into a different type of player, if I take a hit, then yeah. And at, at the end of the day, this is, these are questions that um, I'm learning to ask myself because I'm, trying to teach myself basically game theory and game design um, and starting to read up books on that about the logic and in, in, in pure game design and how does that work. And that's not an area that I'm an expertise in. Um, it's something that I'm just trying to understand. And, um, and it's it sounds crazy. I trust, and this is, you guys are probably going to think I'm crazy. I do trust the producers to design a game that they think will be enjoyed by the masses. Does that mean everybody is going to enjoy that game? No, because there's elements of the game that will not resonate with them. But I ultimately have to to look at these guys and say, I trust your judgment because you're designing the game, you're trying to manage this game you know, for the entire ecosystem and trying to build something there. I'm just also grateful that they don't work in silos, that they have people like myself um, and Guru from a community standpoint that can go to them and have conversations with them and say, you know what, we're hearing this. Is this something that we can change, something that we can do a little bit differently that could really push the envelope and turn a program, you know, that's not as as excitable to into something a little bit better? Yeah, so. silos is something Rex also mentioned, and trying to break them down and get people to communicate. So that's that's cool that you also mentioned. That's it's a it's a big focus at EA because communication is a big issue just in general with the world. There's too much of it. Um, joking, but um, so with the <laughs> communication, you asked earlier about creativity and changes to Mutt and the Ghost, and and this is something I'm going to steal from Tex, who we mentioned a few weeks back. Basically, the Ghost issue I think is because people expected it. If you would have came out on, say, December 18th or whatever before the promo saying, no ghosts this year, but enjoy what we've got coming for you, people wouldn't have expected ghosts on December 31st, even though ghosts is a Christmas thing. Like, people still uh, in the community were saying, think we're getting ghosts today on the 27th? I'm like, no, it's a Christmas thing. Think we're getting ghosts today on the 28th? I'm like, no, that's a Christmas thing. So I, I think it is the, your, your guys' communication about – programs ahead of time it feels lacking and the fact that you guys are trying to innovate and i love that i want innovation i don't want the same stuff over and over because that is boring um but you guys got to basically tell us as a community 
what to expect somewhat um, beforehand. Mm -hmm. So wh why don't you guys come out and tell us beforehand you're not getting this? Yeah, so um, so first of all, just as we're innovating with the game, right, we're also trying to innovate kind of like in, in my area of community. You know, I'm, you can do community a lot of different ways. Um, you know, you can do... You can do it through social media. You know, you can go ahead and do it through podcasts. You can do it through blogs. You can do it through forum posts, all that kind of stuff. And um, I just want to say that we're trying different things and how we communicate going forward. Um, you know, we've learned a lot of things. I think over the ghost thing, it was something that I learned. Um, uh, I can provide some clarity. Uh, no, actually, that's not not the we're talking about ghost. Um, that was something that. I wanted to go back to the team and also make sure that we were able to communicate something on. And, and I'm, I'm just very I, I'm very careful about communicating certain things because you guys both know the moment you say something, especially from a company perspective, it like becomes law. Right. And at the end of the day, my responsibility is to communicate stuff and work with the community, but I want to make sure that I have the facts straight. And I think that when we went ahead and started doing this kind of stuff, the focus was you're going to do out of position, then we're going to do snow beast. And then there you go. And I think a lot of the questions that ghosts were being talked about earlier on. And I don't think that they really wanted to kind of, t I don't think we really wanted to talk about that because we wanted to focus to be on snow beast. But I think that after snow beast released that probably been more optimal time to maybe have said something, but with everyone being outside of the studio and then me needing to go and have those conversations and get those approvals, Hindsight for me is 2020, and now I can say, okay, if we're doing something different and we're not going to have a particular type of program, maybe we need to find a way to kind of communicate that a little bit early. So I think that's a, a very fair point, a very fair assessment, and how we communicate that is the bigger question. You know, is it better to communicate it on social, you know, where people go there for kind of news and new content, or does it make sense for like the hardcore people to put this in, you know, a blog or is it a better place to put it on a podcast or is it a better place to put it, um, you know, in the forums where people can go ahead and comment and we can get, we can track feedback and kind of take that information back internally um, and stuff like that. So, you know, um, apologies, I mean, to the community on that front. Um, I know a lot of people are like, you know, probably don't expect the apology. Um, I'm not saying that by not saying anything, we did something wrong. I'm saying from the perspective of sorry that I couldn't help out there, but I see all the negative feedback that came from that. And I'm happy to take that back and make the necessary changes. That's all I can do. All I can do is change what I do. I can't change, you know, I, I can't, you know, I'm not responsible for the people on a specific team. I'm responsible for what I can do. Mm -hmm. But what I can do at the end of the day is take that feedback, figure out how do we go ahead and figure this out and start having those conversations with that team and saying, this is important to them. You know, I understand that ghost wasn't the plan, but could we find a way in the future to talk about these things? And I think that we can. Carlo, so, um, yeah, as to being like, you, you know, you said you're, uh, uh, you know, good at communication. Can you communicate to text? Because I haven't been able to all year that doing power ups are a bad idea because he, he doesn't <laughs> like them, but he still does them all. Can you tell? I'm crazy. Bro. Can you interview? Hey, you know why? Let me tell you why I do power ups because y'all took chemistry away from me. So I got to find something to entertain the masses. That's what, what I do. What, what? What? All right, that's a good point. What? What's? What about chemistry this year? Why is it so crappy? You're asking me. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think. Um, I think that there's some chemistries that are kind of like, eh, I don't know. Um, I I've seen a lot toughness. of feedback. Yep. Oh, go toughness ahead. sucks. Yeah, toughness. Yeah, I was tough, just saying. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want to give name, like, but like toughness. I'll, no, I'll say yeah, it. but I've seen that. I've seen that from the community. Like toughness. You know, I don't know. Um, that feedback has been shared with folks in the studio and they have looked at it, um, you know, and trying to figure out, okay, what can we do here? Um, it's, uh, I know a lot of people have complained about chemistry, um, you know, it, that I know of like you guys and whatnot. And it's something that, um, it has been passed along. It'll be interesting to see. I know like chemistry abilities, um, you know, there's been a lot of questions around that as well. I know we got some new ones recently with this, uh, latest, uh, team of the week update content. So, um, you know, we've seen some new chemistry abilities like in Khalil Mack. Yeah, I think the um, and, you know, some of the guards think that. Yeah, I, I like the abilities and the innovation and the abilities year to year. I, I yeah. do think that is a step up. Texas? Yeah, they're dope. The Seth, well, I mean, all of them except when they fix the game and then they make them useless. <laughs> <laughs> like unfakeable? Yeah. 
Yeah, but yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been it's been kind of cool finally seeing because I know I know y'all put those in the game. Right? Actually, I think Up's new, but y'all put Lead the Way like the ability in the game. Like, want to say like during the first patch, but it's nice to finally see a card come out that actually has it. I've actually I haven't actually gotten to a game with Zagmar, but I do notice he gets out in front of my running back a lot more on pulling plays than other guards did in the past. So it seems it's in- these cool things that works. Yeah, it's interesting to watch. You know, I mean, I know that when the team comes out with these kind of new chemistry abilities, a lot of work goes into them. And you got to keep in mind, I think a lot of people, you know, even when you bring in like game changers into the studio um, to go ahead and test certain kind of features. And I brought this up on the Mudhead podcast. You got to keep in mind, these guys play the game a certain way. And sometimes it takes the actual you know, the actual chemistry ability or like the certain changes that be out there in the market and you see how different people interact and they uncover different things. You know, you do your very best to test everything and make sure it's working perfectly. But sometimes once it's out there and you see how everyone's playing it, then you start realizing, okay, maybe we need to change this or maybe we need to change that. And, you know, our teams do look at a lot of the telemetry that comes in from the game and they kind of look at what's going on in the community, right? So, you know, if, if people are using a certain kind of meta or doing a certain kind of a thing or like a certain kind of instance is occurring time and time again, they can look at that telemetry data, see what the community feedback is, what they're saying as well and say, you know what? The telemetry data over here is saying this. The community feedback is saying this. They're actually onto something. Let's go ahead and take a look and see how we can address it, how we can tune, tune it server side or do we need a, a, a client side patch um, and all that kind of stuff. And I, I am hoping in the near future, we'll be able to explain. I think this is a big question. It's like, well, we report these issues to you guys, fix it, you know, fix it now. Um, and there's a process that goes on with that. And that's something I've been talking with our development director of like, you know what? I think it might not be bad if we were to go ahead and put up a post, you know, when we start kind of like, a, if, if we start a new series of doing some kind of post and educating our, our, our community, it's like, let's talk a little bit about how software works. Let's do an interview. You know, we can do a written interview or we can do a podcast and say, you know, what is that process from the moment that a bug's reported? Who does it go to? How does it get triaged? How does it go ahead and get fixed? How does it go through certification? You know, how do we tune it? How do we fix that? I think stuff like that is important for your hardcore community members because they just need to know. They want to understand because they love the game and they invest so much time into it. Yeah, I, over that, I mean, like – the bug stuff, that's cool and all. I prefer like a, a blog post telling us what traits and attributes do. Yeah, no, I mean, I yeah. think a lot of people would too. Yeah. And, and that's and that's something I think that we need to get there, you know? And I, I think at the end of the day, it's, you know, these are conversations I'm having. These are conversations I'm having with Rex. You know, Rex is big. Um, you know, he's like, he, he. I know a lot of people give Rex a hard time. You know, and, and I'll be the first to say, man, when I met Rex and I come down the studio, I kind of felt like he just didn't care about what I had to say. But he actually does, you know, and everyone cares about things differently. He's very passionate about the game. Um, he really wants to try to fix everything as much as possible. Um, I have to say kudos to these guys like, you know, Guru and Rex and Jake Stein, because I think when there was no communication on a lot of things, these were the guys that actually stepped up because they cared about the community and tried to get stuff out there. And to an extent it helped, but it also hurt them because now uh, there's a lot of people that kind of snap at them or, or get upset because they're not on. And you got to understand it's, it takes a lot out of a person to be out there on the front line, you know, and the, you know, they're just trying to help. And I, I think that there's instances out there and I'm just standing up for my studio members, you know, when they do snap, um, you know, or people make comments about, you know, other community managers or things like that. This is a, this is a tough job. This is, this is a grueling job day in, day out. It's like, you know, imagine being that person at a call center or you're taking the call. Hey, or you're trying to sell something to somebody. Hey, would you like this? Sorry, take me off your do not call list. You know, and you hear negativity every single day. It does wear on you. And you, then you have to start figuring things out for yourself of how do I create a type of, um, how do I create a system to deal with that? To make sure that I'm getting the right kind of feedback. How do I listen through the noise? How do I go ahead and address those kind of things, you know, and 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 then get the right kind of communication out, you know, like people get pissed off about the traits and they get pissed off about not knowing what these things are or the thresholds. It's like, okay, 
how do we sift through that noise? How do we build process? How do we get that information out there? And I know it went a little bit on a tangent, but I think it's fair to say we do want to get that information out. It's just it's just it's a challenge and we got to figure fix that. And that's something that I'm working with that team on. So sorry for the rant. Yeah, sorry for the <laughs> That's why we have you on here. But, yeah. yeah, we want you ranting. Um Texas, any thoughts on that? I mean, if you're already working on it, yeah, I already have it on my, on my question with the traits and stuff. I got an idea on what you can do to like maybe communicate that better because uh, I feel yeah, like go for it. like in games, that's my biggest thing. Like I, as a person that plays the game, obviously I have a, I have a YouTube channel, so I, I can contact a lot of people. But I see a lot of people like, "Yo, Tech, without your video, I wouldn't know about this." And I don't. I feel like that's kind of not how this should be. I feel like maybe like like with traits, for example. Since the up thing's out right now, like why is your quarterback inaccurate going up against this Khalil Mack? Check out Mudhead to find out which trait he has. It's just like stuff in game to where you can communicate that so people can actually go see what these things do um, that they may not know about as outside of having to go navigate through the internet. It could just be in the game. No, and I I'll, agree one hundred percent. Yeah. So like, what? I feel like that, that'll cause a lot more. <laughs> I don't know, somebody ring the doorbell. A lot more. Uh, no, don't you bark. Oh, why is somebody ring my doorbell at this late? I, I, I feel like that would cause a lot uh, more. Do you need to go get I that? Don't like, know. I don't know. I don't know. That's a question for you, man. Why is somebody here? Um, hey, so so while, while Texas is getting that, hey, and uh, along with that being in-game, is there any thought about putting like stats in-game of your cards, like MLB or NHL or FIFA does? Like, Why can't I see, see my guys my cards and their stats they've racked up for me no that's i think that's a great question i don't i don't have an answer for you on that one gut fox personally when i was a game changer i wanted that feature right i'd love to see you know it, it's a fun mechanic um i think like with fifa it's something i absolutely loved you know like i would love buying a new card off the off the auction market that was no you know statless you know and then go ahead and get those accrued stats and goals and all that kind of stuff it's just a it's a fun element it's like you you invest in something you track it you know it kind of creates that 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 emotional connection between you and that virtual item it sounds really kind of weird there but um <laughs> but yeah you know i think um yeah so um I think that that's a cool thing. And I know it's been suggested to the studio. So at the end of the day, these things are always brought up, um, you know, as part, as they plan, um, you know, the current mode and looking at things in the future, what they want to do. So that's something um, I like the idea. Yeah. I think that, I think that'd be a lot of fun and brings a lot of engagement into the game and gives you that sense of ownership. If, if, if you guys end up doing that, I think the cool, a cool thing would be with that uh, to tie in power ups, like say once a, a quarterback gets 10,000 yards, he, he powers up. So Either you can do it yourself or buy a quarterback close to it and then get that 10,000-yard passing mark, power them up, then sell them on the auction house. I think that would be – if if you could do a, uh, a power-up, more like a like a role-playing game like that, where it's like if, if that guy gets enough experience, he – powers up he levels up to the to like a higher overall to the next to the the, the quote-unquote final stage of the, or his next power up level i don't know that's just my thought how you could tie it in no that's great i mean i look at the madden mobile model and i think they're doing some cool stuff in that space with you know how you take your nat cards and you put them in there and they kind of change a little bit their ratings um you know this is me and this is this is not me talking as an ea employee but this is me talking as a person of what i've always envisioned madden you know so I'm, I've always been an ultimate team per person, but I've always wanted that. I've always wanted other elements of other modes in ultimate team. And what I mean by that is like, what I love about franchise is I can play with a player and I can always upgrade them. And it's like, I would love a world where I was playing Madden ultimate team and I had like my player or, um, if it wasn't just my player, maybe it was, um, you know, uh, like, like not a player. I cre if I created a player or if I had a player on my team and everything that I did was revolved around things that I accomplished with that specific item to kind of get them to that next level, whether it was through XP, like the XP upgrade system, or, um, if it was like, if you pulled something out of a pack, you can go ahead and add a little bit of that to kind of help them get to that next XP level and things like that. I think that game mechanic is pretty awesome. Um, and personally, I've always wanted something like that in Madden. Um, and, in, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know what the future holds for Madden. But um, I think that 
in this space, in this gaming industry, the more I get into it, I see that type of model where people invest time, um, you know, and in, in, in doing upgrades. It's it's a lot of fun for them. Um, and it's always been fun for me. I mean, especially when I play like Injustice, Injustice 2 Mobile um, and other kind of mobile games, I, that mechanic is pretty interesting yeah. to see how it works. Yeah, and, and hopefully with your study in game theory, you can you can bring it to the next level in, in Madden going forward. <laughs> so uh, you, you mentioned Madden Mobile, and uh, th- they recently put in an option today to sell coins. They selling at Madden on their end now. Uh, MMG when we had we had him on the podcast said the Madden Mobile crew is like four dudes doing the whole thing. Is that accurate? No, there's a lot more people than just four people. I okay. mean, there's uh, I think the the people that he interfaces with probably were like four people you know i think at the end of the day when people come to the studio you know whether it's for like a game changer event um or something like that they'll interface with me right and then we bring in people that are kind of like the, the functional heads of that particular group and they take that back to their teams but that that team is more than four people i, I kind of laughed when i saw i heard that but <laughs> um you know i mean um you know, there's there's a there's a lot that goes on. Um, I saw that change today as well, and you know, of course, it, it actually made me ask some questions. You know, and I'm gonna probably talk to, um, you know, the producer on that on that team and just ask them. You know, like just basic questions. You know, how how you know why do we go here? You know, the, of course, the the natural evolution of all this will be from the community of like, well, can that come to console? A lot of those things I don't know. I don't know the design decisions of why they did some of that kind of stuff. But um, it, it definitely um, it's something that you know, as a community manager, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't go and explore what other games are doing. You know, what are they doing successful there, and you know, how is that going to change the ecosystem for uh, console games? Because we know, yeah. as we know it, that mobile games sometimes do have an impact on how console games are being played today. Yeah, so uh, with that in Madden Mobile, um, a couple things. One, that's just like MLB The Show does. So I, we've seen it on console for sports games before. They, they sell their stubs and you buy packs with stubs. And, I, and somebody, I think I saw today, um, it was mentioned that Madden Mobile, they switched to this in order to get around the new Apple terms of service where you have to, um, ex- uh, you basically, if you buy loot boxes for cash... Um, you have to expose your odds. Whereas now, if you if you buy coins in Madden Mobile, then open packs, you won't have to expose the loot box odds. Is that something that uh, is accurate, or I, you wouldn't know because it's Madden Mobile, not your I, expertise? I I wouldn't know, you know. And I think that um, yeah, on that one, I really wouldn't know. I haven't really talked to the team since the implementation uh, that went down. Um, I I have been doing a little bit of research on that stuff with Apple. Um, you know, and whatnot. And there's people, of course, above me that are, are reviewing all of the stuff when it comes down to game design and things like that, um, you know, to ensure that people have that, that experience that they want. So, yeah. Do you think, do you think in the future, um, and in tech, sorry, I'll throw it back to you in a second. Uh, do you think in the future, Kralo, that uh, Madden or Mutt, Madden Ultimate Team here on console goes free to play just like Madden Mobile does because of the amount of people spending in Ultimate Team? You know, it's it's an interesting model because uh, to me, I think what you're kind of describing, um, well, it's you you're, you're saying free to play. Um, you know, I I've been seeing, I've been watching a lot of games, and I've been watching this industry for quite a while. Um, I like the Netflix model personally, um, where I see just kind of like this is just my vision of a video game, right? Where I can go to a particular publisher, and that publisher, I can I can be a part of their ecosystem or a part of a particular brand, like let's say it's sports or it's shooters, you know, I pay that subscription model um, to go ahead and get that opportunity to get involved with that game. And if I want, then from there, you have those upsell opportunities if you want to go ahead and buy the full thing. Um, I think that, you know, like, you know, Gamefly kind of did that little thing in the beginning where you rented out a game, you know, if you liked it or not. But I, I think there's something to be said with studios now that, um, I, th- I think in this space with everything going digital, they have to evolve. Um, and, you know, I th- EA has to evolve. You know, every- everybody has to evolve in the industry um, because things are changing with tech and how people consume, uh, you know, digital content, how people consume videos, how people consume just stuff. It's it's kind of fun. We talked about this a little bit earlier about, you know, going to Japan. I remember going to Japan and I think it's Akihabara. It's like the tech center, right? And it's just crazy the amount of just 
it's just like entertainment. Like people just live for this. And I'm like, this is crazy that society is like this over here right now, um, where everything is just about entertainment and media and just eating. But they're ahead of the curve because now I'm starting to see a lot of that now where that's where we're at. We want to consume content on the go where we're at. We want to engage. It's just a model that's we're slowly evolving into. And it's pretty crazy. I mean, and, and, you know, subscription could be free to play. I don't know. But personally, I think I like the Netflix model more than anything, you know, where it's more, you know, you you pay that flat fee. Um, I'm, I'm big on the subscription model with Netflix and Spotify and all that kind of stuff uh, where it's I, I, I give you a, a some amount and I can just it's, eat anything I want off the cart, a la carte. It's very interesting you say that because of two things. One, that's basically how MMOs work, um, like World of Warcraft. You got a, a subscription model. Um, or I think didn't Andrew Wilson say that in like an investor call that they're looking at moving to that there at EA in the coming years, maybe not in the next couple, but doing and you guys already have a subscription type service there with EA access where you charge, but like five bucks a month or, or less, I think if you get a whole year. Um, so it's kind of something that you guys already have in place and have talked about. So it's interesting that that's your preferred method, Crelo. Yeah, I mean, you look at EA Access, I talk to a lot of my friends, and it's it's cool to see them like, you know, they're like, ah, you know, it, it's cool to see how that model works, because I have a lot of friends that I game with, um, where they'll play Madden, and then one of them will start playing FIFA, you know, and um, they're like, hey, I, I got on EA Access for free, and like, oh, really? So then everyone goes and they download the game, and then everyone starts playing the game, and then... One will go off and start playing NHL. Then everyone will migrate over there as it's on EA Access. So it's cool. It's been cool to see that because what you're, to me, what the reason I like that model is, you can go and engage in a particular type of game when you want to engage with it, and that time might like the division. Like let's say like Ubi, um, yeah, Ubisoft. I'm, I'm yep. might, Ubisoft makes the division, but like I had, and this is great. I had the division for a year and a half before my friends sorry after my friends played it for so long and what i noticed was that when i started playing it when i was my time and i was ready to play it they came back on the game you know but imagine a model where it's like you don't have to wait that long you all can play together all the time and i think that that's what gaming has always been about is it's a place for you to go to get away and to do something fun and to engage with people that you know like your second family you know like all your buddies and and hang out with them and that's what i just i, I that, that's my ideal world of of gaming is that you can do that kind of stuff and it would be kind of cool if ea could do that where it's like i can go with my buddies wherever i want to and play all the games that i want whenever i want um yeah. and that that helps my engagement i will play more i will invest more of my time in that game and in that particular product by doing something of that of that nature, so what, that's just me. I see what you're saying there. I, I just I think at that point EA is getting too greedy because on one hand you have the MMO model like the World of Warcraft where they charge you a monthly fee and then they get their they don't have the microtransactions in there kind of like but and then you get the free to play MMOs where they have the microtransactions for boost. So it, it it's almost trying to like have your cake and eat it too. Now now maybe World of Warcraft has put in microtransactions since I stopped playing years ago, um, but I, it feels like there's no need for the monthly fee if you have microtransactions, or if if you have a monthly fee, there's no need for the micro. Or sorry, in the other way, I just screwed it up. But but to do to do them both almost feels like you're inviting more backlash on that sense, and it feels it feels too much to me to have requiring both to play your games and to, to get ahead. And that's fair. You know, I think that that's a I mean, you know, we're in this landscape right now where there's a lot of questions around that. Um, you know, to me, I like I like the Netflix model um, because it's just always been like I can go and it's like I, I can go grab whatever I want during that time. Um, but there's also that model, too, where you can pay the monthly or you can pay like that, that that discounted premium price, you know, where you you um, something is worth. Let's just put let's let's put like a, a game figure on there. Right. Like 60 bucks. Um, but then you go ahead and pay like 
45, but then you can actually play all the games in that particular ecosystem, you know, where you pay a flat fee and then you, you, you can consume all that sports content across all those type of game modes I um, or something like that. Yeah. Um, and I, like if it was a shooter and it was like by a certain company and they had all these type of shooter games, I'm the kind of person that I wouldn't mind the subscription model. But I also am the kind of person, too, that if like I know I'm going to play all those games that are there, then I'll pay up front at a lesser price to be able to engage all that kind of stuff. So it'll be interesting. I mean, like, you know, with everything moving digital, I don't go to a store and I buy a video game anymore. I just I just buy it online. And a lot of times I buy the game when it actually goes on sale. You know, to kind of save myself some money there. But if I can save more money at the end of the day, I'll 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 engage in that model, whether it's it is a subscription or if it's just like paying a premium price. Um, but to be able to do more than, than just play that game. I got you, Texas. So any that's, thoughts? That's, well, the subscription model. <clears throat> um, as long, like, it was with Mutt though, like if it's just for Madden Ultimate Team or just like the FIFA stuff, I don't know exactly how they would do. I remember I think in years past their subscription model was the. Uh, you had to buy access to play online. Yeah, I don't want to see that again. <laughs> yeah. I don't think anybody wants to be able to like, have to pay a subscription model to play with the team that they put money into. So uh, I don't think going the MMO route is the best course. I, mean, I think the way they're doing it right now is better. I think like with well, Fox tomorrow going free to play where Madden's free because they make a lot of the money on the back end with the packs and stuff would be the, probably the best move long term. But that's okay. just my opinion on that. Okay. I mean, I support. I support I support a lot of the models at the end of the day, and um, you know the 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 free one it, it can it can be the same as well. I, I think there's opportunity to grow in this space. Looking at all these kind of games, I, people are at the end of the day, they're not only trying to they're really trying to get you into their game, you know. And, and once you're in the game and you're in that ecosystem, you're there, right? So whether it's it's money spent or it's time spent, um, I think it's a, the whole thing at the end of the day is how do we get people to play our game more. That's just the big question that I think a lot of people are asking across all studios, you know. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, especially because in this day and age, it's basically you'll, you'll pick up one game because of how in-depth these games are. Uh, and the gaming industry has kind of moved away from like you pick up a single player game, play it for 15 hours. You pick up the next single player game, you play it for 15 hours and so on and so forth. Or if you get a Final Fantasy single player game, you play it for 40 hours. And so but so now it's like now Madden, I, I went through a few weeks ago on the podcast, me and my friends list and how many hours we put in just to Madden 18. I think I've put in 30 days or something more already. Um, and then like 17 was twice that or so. So it's much more like nowadays everybody plays like basically just one or two games and it consumes the most of life because that's kind of what gaming companies want is you on their stuff more than their competitors. And it, so it's it's less about the number of games and more about the, the number of hours you put in each game for some reason. But Tex, what, what, uh, what, do you have any other questions? Oh, and, and the subject, no, but I got the question I can ask stuff yeah, about. Yeah, go ahead. All right, so one of the main things I wrote down on my list that I don't think we got to, because I missed y'all's topic because I didn't get the door because my roommate forgot his key. Yeah, don't no. you love that when you got a podcast? It's like, don't bug me. And then you ring the doorbell and my dog's barking and ruins everything. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Yeah, it all, it all happens at once, right? Yeah. Right, yeah. Okay. Um. So look at this list right now with the packs. We're going to talk about packs right now. Um, I went back to Will's video on September 21st, and I was watching him pull elite packs, 5,400 points. Uh, six elite packs with an 84 overall topper. And then I check Scomo's stream from this past weekend. Same packs, same reward, or same topper. Is there any chance we're going to see a improvement with the overalls? Because it's at the point now where it's better to play the gauntlet on leash because you get a better value than it is to pull those elite player packs. Yeah, no, that's good feedback. That's something, um, you know, I could take back to the team and just kind of share that. I know that... The, when it's come down to certain kind of packs or something like that or sets, we've made recommendations. Uh, we can always take that back. I know like weekend league, people were really upset that the rewards were like really, uh, people weren't happy with the rewards. Right. And I think it was like, you got two, a chance at two eighty plus, Um, and then I think it was like an 86, um, and you could choose, you know, one of three and then they upped those rewards with the latest release. And granted the question, you know, that people were asking, well, you know, that's not enough. You need to do more. I think the team is constantly looking at all that entire ecosystem and trying to figure out, okay, how do we, how do we make things work here? But I can, I can take, I can take that feedback back for sure. 
Hey, yeah, Chris. Oh, go on. It's one, one of the big things that people were talking about. I know Toke, when he went like talk about his pack rant, like, it's the same pack you're gonna be able to. Uh, it's gonna be in, in. It's gonna be in the game five months from now, and doesn't make much sense that if you're gonna keep evolving, like you can still pull eighty overall elites out of those packs and the same top or eighty four when it should probably be like eighty eight or higher at this point. So yeah, and- just just some uh, just trying to make the game or the packs grow as the game is evolving as well. Yeah, and the thing to keep in mind, too, is that people are always coming into the game, too, at all points, right? So, like, there's a lot of people that come into the game, you know, right around Christmas. You got people that come into the game more. You have people that come into the game around Super Bowl, you know, based on promotional advertising or when the game goes on sale. You know, you have influxes after the game is launched. So you you have new people coming to that ecosystem that probably don't see that. But for the hardcore person like yourself and I, we've been playing it for a while— I do see that, right? So it's finding that balance with all of that um, at the end of the day. But it's 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 a fair point. I'll take that back to the team uh, and whatnot. Yeah. Hey, Kralo, how come you guys with the Gauntlet Unleashed and stuff, why did you guys decide to do like this weekly stuff instead of like one long string of solos? Like, And, and why is the journey so bad this year? And, the, and instead of having like 120 solos that would like uh, carry people for like a few weeks, you decided to like break it up week to week with uh, uh, Unleashed. Why did you guys decide to go with the, the shorter – turnover this year versus the big long strings um i think at the end of the day you know and uh, again a lot of these decisions like a lot of these questions and the ask are from a design perspective we're designed well before my time right so i kind of came you know i started working at ea like on august 21st um i think it was like a, it was actually a day or two before the game actually launched um i can't remember it was the 23rd right or was it the 21st i can't remember that far uh, back yeah 23rd um, sounds right yeah, so I think I started at EA. It was the 21st or the 22nd. Uh, then I flew out to New York after that. Um, so a lot of those game design, is, game design decisions, you know, I'll be honest with you, I would love to answer them if I knew the answer or if I could answer them. Um, some of that's just I just don't know. Um, I do know that, uh, you know, Gauntlet Unleashed was something new that they wanted to try. Um, you know, Gaunt- when you look at Gaunt- Gauntlet Unleashed, and you have like the weekend league and you have all that kind of stuff. It's really catering to two types of people. It's surprising. There's a lot of people that just don't want to engage in that head to head experience. Right. But they want to be able to go ahead and get some level of rewards for kind of playing a bit of a season type of approach, you know, and kind of going through the ranks and, and that challenge. So I think the gauntlet unleashes that kind of like that version of weekend league when you think about it, where it's like you're giving something for those people that compete online head to head and you have these people that do these solos um, over here. And it's something new, it's something different that they wanted to try out to kind of go ahead and, and, and give a little bit of variety and diversity there and engage people. Because think about it, at the end of the day, it's not only, I know a lot of people think, oh, it's only about making money. You know, there's also other ways and other metrics that our teams look at things and that is the level of engagement how are people engaging in solos how are they engaging in weekend league how are they engaging in mutt drafts you know and 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 what's keeping their attention and what brings them back into the game you know day in day out is it just a quick sell that brings them back or is there some compelling content that they can play against to make that happen um i know the journey question i know i've gotten a lot that a lot too gut fox of like you know why don't we have a full string of solos to play? And I think it's not about people want solos to play. It's more about they want more rewards, right? So, like, the the, the beautiful thing about Journey, you know, back in the day when, when you and I used to play it and all that kind of stuff is that people got these packs and they got these coins. And, and that was, like, the drive. But once it was over, it was over. And then it was, like, there's nothing to engage in. There's nothing to do. And I think Gauntlet Unleashed kind of gives a little bit of that opportunity there to kind of bring you back week to week. Now the question is, is there opportunity to innovate upon that? Is there opportunity to change things? I think the teams are always looking at that kind of stuff. Okay. All right. Thanks. Texas, any questions? Yeah, more with packs. Um, we haven't got level up <laughs> upgrade soon. Uh, I, I think 55 is the next level. At least that's what it said on your website. Um, and I was wondering, will the packs be updated to like current content? So some level 40, I think a lot of us are as well. A lot of us probably have kind of crazy teams. You're playing a game with solo challenges and playing and pulling packs. So your team should probably be at least like a 92 at this point, maybe 90 overall. No, I think Wise has a 90 overall, no money spent team. And so I'm looking at a lot of these uh, cards that came inside the first set of exclusive level of packs. I was wondering if the content is going to be updated or if you know the content will be updated because it seems... I really wouldn't want to pull a bunch of like cards I already have out of those packs. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I, I don't know the answer to that question. And a lot, a lot of things about future content I, I typically don't talk about. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know um, regarding you know the next level increase, what are they going to do there? I do know that when we went to level 40, you know, mind you, it the, the number one issue with level 40, I think originally was it came out it took a long time to come out, right? So if you look at the contents that were available when you got to level 40, I think there's a lot of good stuff there. Mm -hmm. but, the cards can actually use. But, but what a lot, of, a lot of the community was saying is that this would have been better if it was like a little bit earlier. So I think there was like a lot of projects that kind of inhibited level cap from coming out sooner than later. Um, and there were a couple of things that happened. So, you know, it's something that I can definitely take back to the team. I I'm pretty sure they're thinking about this to make sure that, you know, when you make that next grind, that whatever you make that next grind for, it's worth it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's surprising people. A lot of people say everybody's at level cap surprisingly not a lot of people are at level cap you know it's a very small percentage but that over time you know when you do double xp or you come out with like new promos where they have that incentive where you're grinding every single day to get this or you're you're you know you're you're playing all these type of solos to go ahead and and get like an nat player you know people are getting to that that next level cap increase a lot quicker so i'm sure the team is thinking about that and um, I, guru and i we're we're involved in those meetings when they do talk about level out cap increase and they kind of show us what's to be shown and we'll give our feedback then and say okay have you thought about this that or this is what we're seeing in the community and that's what a lot of people um to provide some clarification a lot of people ask me about content right like hey is this going to happen or this I may know, but I'm probably not going to talk about it because it's just not my place. Mm -hmm. I'm not, it's not, that's not what I, that's not my role. That's not my job. That, that resides in that player engagement team, which Guru is a part of, where he's done a phenomenal job of managing that EA Sports Mutt channel, um, getting information out there. Because when I, when I knew he got that job, there wasn't a lot of communication coming out that way. He's done a lot to transform that particular channel for communication. And that's why I don't talk about it. I don't want to steal that thunder from that channel, from that role. Um, and it's just, I just prefer, I've always been this way that official channels communicate what they need to. Uh, I am communicating a lot more on Mutthead and Reddit about things, but that's because I'm seeing a lot of questions come up and I feel like they just need answers. So I'll go through those official channels. They're like, yeah, post it on the sites. I want to create a system where it's like you can go to an EA type of site. Um, maybe it is our forum to get those answers and we can cross post on other things. But, um, you know, um, just know that Guru and I do sit on some of these content meetings. And as we review that content, we're like, um, so are these packs going to be available for coin purchase? You know, are these, is there going to be a path that if I do this over here in this particular part of the promo, um, that it, if I, if I get involved in, in all rookies, um, can I go ahead and take that content and maybe go ahead and, and put it into uh, another type of content like team of the year? Or if I go ahead and, and participate in Madden harvest and I'm going after, Michael Irvin and I realized that I'm not going to be able to do that. Can I get some elite players created over here, um, you know, as part of the Barry Sanders path? So those are things that we're involved in those meetings. We do talk. We, we try to go ahead and provide recommendations. And when the programs are over, um, we kind of put like a, a postmortem um, of all the community feedback, what they liked, what they didn't like, what they could change. And then we present that to the team and say, hey, can you guys consider this for the next program? This we know this will drive a lot of positive sentiment and conversation, um, you know, and and and, so, and a lot of times these guys are like, yeah, we see that we saw that was a concern. We'll look at addressing that next time. So interesting. Uh, I, I think uh, how many times have you like? All right, well, actually, let me ask this first. So you're taking credit for putting the rookies into the team of the year promo? No, I don't take credit <laughs> for anything. You know, at I, the end of the day. I mean, if I, uh, yeah, no. <laughs> how many times have you have you put into your uh, community feedback report and to, uh, told the, the guys like be like, well, that jerk gut fox uh, uh, suggested this, or how many times you name drop somebody in those meetings saying this guy suggested this, so we should probably go ahead and not do it. I like, get to try and stay away from this, basically. Um. I take all the credit, man. I take all. I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> not at all. Um, no, I, I kind of keep a lot of people anonymous, um, you know, not to draw attention. 
But the people that do highlight content through videos, um, I kind of have like a section in my report. It's like notable content um, where it's 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 notable content about, you know, like what what people are really watching, you know, out there in the community and like how people are engaging. But then there's also stuff like there's been a few times I put your stuff in there, like notable content about the patch, you know, Gut Fox gives a, 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 a deep break th- breakdown of everything that's going on with the patch and things like that. To me, that's notable. That's that's something that our community members are actually, they love the game. They want to educate other kind of people about that. And I think it's notable from my opinion um, that we kind of look at it. And there's people that have put in their videos like, what would you do differently about the flashback program? What would you do differently next year about football outsiders? And they break that down and we'll go ahead and either distill some of that kind of stuff, highlight that particular video, give credit where credit's due. Um, and stuff like that. So, yeah. But so, for the most part, a lot of stuff that you guys are saying, almost a lot of other people are saying. So I kind of look at it as a, cum- uh, a cumulative voice uh, for the most part. Yeah, I've never had an original vo- uh, thought in my life. So, yeah, I just generally steal from other people. Uh, Texas, hey, any, man. Texas, any thoughts? That's the fastest way to success, man. You get some <laughs> creative people around you, take their ideas, and then all of a sudden – you are. Thomas, I, I was a YouTuber. I did that. I was, I was go, oh, you're lost and unbound. I was gonna say. Gonna... <laughs> <laughs> Shots. Shots fired. Do you guys? Hey, ever... give me one second, guys, real quick. I'm gonna step away. I'll let you guys okay. chat. Um, I need. My wife just came in, so I, she has a question for me. I'll be right back. Okay. All right. See you in a second. Yeah, Texas. I'd imagine, um, like w- with them looking at our feedback and stuff. Like, do you think they'll, they'll maybe I should ask Kralo this if they take any YouTubers like spin the wheel idea or or your uh, bingo idea and maybe make a mini game of it in Mutt? How, would that be cool? A lot of things they can do from YouTubers that are probably that can that can inst- like implement to the game to make it fun. Like, I mean, the biggest one would just be a board of Mutt where it's just a pack opening game where you can play like with uh, maybe like four people and they can add wagers to it where like you bet like fifty thousand coins and whoever completes the board first they can they win the coins. They can do a lot of stuff like that. I don't know if we'll see it because. Obviously, that involves a lot of coding. Yeah, and I guess approval. Cause I guess Mutt has to get like uh, make their own game board and make sure that I mean, get the rules clarified. And they can they can just do a lot of copying and pasting of the stuff that we see from these creative individuals. But I like that idea. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna write down yeah other games. Yeah, because like it happened to FIFA. Like it was board of it was board of FIFA something like that. Because but they spelled it board B O R E D and they did this thing where they're pulling packs. And the last number was like how many spaces you're able to move on a guy on the guys overall. Huh. So if you pull like an 89 overall, it's nine spots. Wait, that was actually in FIFA. It was in FIFA. No, no, it wasn't in FIFA. No, the, the YouTubers made oh, a board. Gotcha. And they were doing it with FIFA packs. And Madden can do that with, with Madden packs. Just kind of or pack wars. You pull pull packs with your friends. Yeah. Just trying to do a lot of stuff to where you can actually engage with your friends. I mean, the biggest thing this year they did. I think that was a step right direction was mud squads. Like, oh, I can play with my friends. Like, I'm not, I, I'm playing Fortnite right now because I can play with my friends. Oh, I yeah. Play squads, I play squads with my friends. These games is more so than just about the individuals, more so about having the camaraderie with your friends. Oh, I completely agree with it. The, the, like, that's, I'm, I'm loving PUBG because I'm playing with people. Like, that's, mm-hmm. it's the same thing. Like, I much prefer the, the multiplayer, multiplier part. Oh, wow. I can't even sp- speak. Um, part of like PUBG than I would like playing solo, so that that makes sense with Mud Squads it being more fun and then having more mini games like that. Is Cradle mm-hmm. back? At the game, yeah, I'm here. PUBG is a good game, man. It's a lot of fun. We should roll. I'll shoot you in the back. See, so we should roll. <laughs> Only on PC. That game is buns on Xbox, bro. It's yeah, not bad. They, since the last update, it was. It's not as bad as last. Yeah, update. last updates. Last updates, pretty nice. I, I'll take oh. PUBG over Fortnite, but I know a lot of people like playing with cartoon characters, so yeah. it's all good. Yeah, I mean, are we all though? Are we all? Yeah, I and mean, we're all kids at heart, man. We're playing video games. <laughs> I mean, technically, technically, they're all cartoon. Yeah, they're all cartoon characters. Cartoons are better than real life, anyway. I'm just saying, like, yeah. the cartoon Teen Titans is better than the actual probably movies that come out sometimes. Huh? I believe. I'm same with Avatar. Right yeah. <laughs> yeah, the cartoon. Yeah, all, cartoons are so much easier, man. It's just like they can do so much more without having to worry about like good acting. Yeah. So, so Kralo, not to get back on topic, um, or to get back on topic, I don't know, but um. <laughs> Hey, we were just talking while well, you left about like other games in Mutt, like so, and that's how like this whole multiplayer and playing with your friends, like, like you know, YouTubers have like spin the wheel, like so. I suggested maybe like putting a wheel into Mutt of packs. You guys used to have wheel of of packs, but like a wheel of yeah, a wheel of packs. You guys used to call it or something, and then just like have an actual like like you pay ten thousand coins, and you get to spin a wheel, and the wheel wheel lands on like okay, legendary pack or pro pack or whatever pack. Like, is there any other talks like putting other mini games or let let me 
let me let Texas describe his mini game, the board of mutt, to you. Like any other things like this. <laughs> oh, so yeah, this is I, I not my idea. This is from FIFA. I just was going to say that I don't want to take no get nobody in trouble for like, oh, I can smell you. No. So what they did over in FIFA was they just uh, it's a pack pooling game. It's kind of like how they got pack FIFA wars YouTubers. where a token yeah, YouTube. FIFA YouTubers like yeah, it was just like another pack war game where they just pull packs and they had to complete this board that they made up. It's kind of like life or, or trouble. We got to get from one object to the end. I guess Monopoly is probably the best example of that. But regardless, you just and then if you pull like an eight on overall card, you get to move your character nine slots on the board. They got like different penalties and rewards for landing in certain spots, just to kind of keep the game fresh. And it'd be kind of cool to see some Madden do some stuff like that. Has there anything been like that thrown on the office to go into like future versions of Mutt? Well, I know that I know the people on the Madden Ultimate team are always talking with other parts of the studio, you know, and they talk with the FIFA guys and things like that and just trying to figure out exactly, you know, what what works, what engages those communities. I mean, think about Weekend League, mm-hmm. you know, where did it start? It happened in FIFA, you know, so um, th- those conversations happen all the time um, as they kind of do planning and whatnot. But um, I don't know of any plans, uh, but I can say that I – I don't doubt people in the studio are having conversations what other people are doing in the sports space, you know, and, and how can they make the game more fun or better, more engaging, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And, and they might even ask people from NBA Live, you know. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Um, so, <laughs> I mean, I just thought of this idea that'd be kind of fire because, like, with Weekend, there'll be an update recently that uh, allowed, like, I guess, not, like, themed potential Weekend League teams that could be something Weekend League could do as well, where like it's like once every month, like once one week out of every single month, you can like drop Weekend League packs. Uh, maybe make it, I don't know if you make it free to play, whatever. Just these, these cards you can pull packs for, and they, they give you get like, it's kind of like mud drafts kind of in a sense. You just basically you open the pack, build your team, and these cards are only able to be used in Weekend League. And then, so that way you That's can kind of get more variety out there and just kind right, of. So, like if, mode. so if you do it, so if you did like a Weekend League, but it was based on. So it's like I'm doing a weekend league, but you're doing it simply from the perspective of you can only open only use the players open in these specific packs. Yeah, yeah, and you know, it, it, I, I one of the things I love that Reddit did. Remember when Reddit would do that tournament where they would only have all gold players and things yeah. like that? I think that type because in FIFA I know they do it. It seems it was a lot of fun where you know you can only play with silver players or you can only play with gold players. Now, granted. That probably frustrated a lot of people, you know, in Madden Ultimate Team, um, if they had to play with an all silver or all gold team. But the challenge element was there, right? Or if you had like, you can only use three elites, you know, three golds and three silvers kind of thing, and then you would take that and you would like road to glory, play against other people. I think stuff like that's kind of cool to see that element if it would ever come into Madden Ultimate Team. I think it would be a big hit um, if people could do something like that, you know, of just that entry and that there's rewards attached to that is that what you guys are thinking yeah yeah because i think i think the show has that like you gotta have bronze players in your lineup or it's kind of like what's yeah. that mode in that oh play the show yeah you know what it, i'm talking about yeah yeah i do that that like, like the weekly tournament that they have where they mm-hmm. restrict you i don't know remember mm-hmm. what it's called um but it is something i've suggested before too yeah, and but I, yeah. mine was crazier i wanted like crazy rules <laughs> like low gravity <laughs> Uh, and, and, and like we like go even even further with it, have more fun with it, or like um, cards are all eight feet tall, kind of like that. That's one thing that you do for Halloween, but it's, it's something similar to that, or what only like three foot tall players. There's something I don't know, or the ball travels twice as far out of a gun. Like eh, it doesn't matter, like out of the quarterback's hand. But what game are we talking about? That's like right that's now? like a, a weekly <laughs> weekly crazy crazy time, like a tavern brawl in Hearthstone where they they change the rules every week. Like or or one week it'll be I don't know uh, Canadian rules where the, the the field is wider and you get a running start. Like, I don't know if you guys can do that. So basically, have the developer screw around screw around with the the physics or the the rule engine um, once a week and then and then put it out. It's just like because here, here's the thing. Like all right, this brings me to another point on on Twitch. So I've been streaming on Twitch for just over two years, about three days a week consistently. And it's not so much that I'm, like, gaining people. It's just that I've seen so many people, like, burn out that just my long- mm-hmm. longevity on the, the platform and streaming there is, is basically like, well, you're a last resort, so we have to watch you. Um, <laughs> so I've seen, like, like there's all like I had a conversation with somebody today, a streamer that was actually pretty darn popular, and they're like, I ah, just just got sick of it i got burned out of streaming i'm like god dang but people aren't people are barely getting to your numbers that you had and it feels like 
because there's so, such limited things to do in Mutt and Madden besides like head to head packs which are expensive and then maybe solos but not a ton of people want to watch solos being done well contrary to texas but like it feels like (laughs) people 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 uh that have streamed like seven days a week that were consistent consistent streamers kind of all burn out in madden like even Mm -hmm. problem takes some weeks off here because of either prep for a tournament i know he just had a child so that's different but um so it, it feels like in madden why is it so hard to keep consistent streamers where like in other games you know the top games the hearthstones the 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 league of legends like they have consistent streamers that stream every day the PUBGs, those kinds where why why is it that madden burns out these streamers is it because there's only like two things to do in game packs and head-to-head you know i don't you know it's it, the funny thing is is that you know before i started working at ea i saw that pattern just with community members in general, right? YouTubers, streamers, where over the last two to three years, they've gotten to a point, I I think there's just, there's been, I think around, because when you think about these streamers and these guys, these are the hardcore, right? These are hardcore people. There's a core, but when we talk about you and me and Texas and whoever, we're really hardcore. And when you're steeped in this year over year over year, it it starts to lose its luster and i've asked some people about that and they say it just it stops it's like the same thing you know and it's like i'm i just want to try something different i want to do something different and like when mutt squads came out there was that burst right of excitement for a little while um and you know for for some people some people are just dove into the mode and absolutely love it and play it all the time and all that kind of stuff um but i've noticed this trend happening for probably the last three years, you know, where people have just started kind of getting burned out in general. And I don't know where it's coming from. You know, you could say it, you know, people could say it's the game. Other people could say it's different things. Um, it's something to definitely explore because one of my challenges as kind of like the community manager is I'm looking at the landscape and I'm seeing more and more people kind of like what you're saying, you know, where, our data shows we're getting a lot of people engaged in the game, but when I actually look at the community side of things and who's out there on the forefront, whether it's YouTube or whether it's Twitch, it doesn't seem as much, you know. So I'd say, are they going to Mixer? Or are they are you know are, are just more people streaming on YouTube, you know, versus Twitch now? Um, and they're they're doing that because it's like I'll stream there and then I'll go ahead and cut up a video so I can monetize on that. It's kill two birds with one stone. I don't know, but it has been interesting to kind of see the trend lately, and and it I'm perplexed by it. I'm trying to figure it out. I'm trying to figure out what is it, and I don't I don't have the answer yet, to be honest with you. Like like even the the guy you're on the podcast last week, Slump said he had like 300 viewers in Madden 25, and then he just picked mm-hmm. it up in 15 and just is like I don't feel like playing it. And the thing is like it's not so much. There's a little bit of like the people that just want that just stop playing Madden. But it's more so like the streamers, like the people that it seems like the burnout is much higher with them. And, and like the bigger ones just and it's not so much like because the people will play it year to year. Like I've, I've had the same like I've known people play Madden for years on years and they, they don't really get sick of it. Yeah, some of them burn out, but it definitely feels like there's a huge percent of just streamers themselves. What is it about Madden? Is it the community? Is it is the, the game? Is it a combo? Yeah, I can I can answer that one because now now we're kind of hitting like the now we're kind of going down a space that uh, on observations that I've seen that as I as I've as I've watched this kind of stuff and I let's just talk about Slump because you know Slump is he's pretty open about it. Um, you know I loved watching Slump. I would tune into his stream. Um, it was positive. You know, it was G rated, PG rated. Um, and I, I thought it was just a great environment for people to interact. And you would see that in the chat. But as he did his challenge, it got to a point where you would go in the chat and you would just see just negativity, a lot of negativity, a lot of frustration. It typically happened, believe it or not, right as you go into the off season, right? Um, because people are engaging in the content during the regular season, but in the off season, people just, you know, they get tired of the game, they get frustrated of the game and guess what? You know, people talk about it and then more people talk about it in your stream. And then not just that, but also when you're a streamer, people ask you the same question again and again and again and again. And and a lot of these parallels are kind of like to my current role. 
Um, and, and him and I talked about this is that, you know, when you get these questions again and again, it kind of wears on you, kind of get tired. It, 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 it dulls you a little bit. And then when you start seeing the negativity and you have to tell people in the chat, you know, like chill on it or yes, we understand this is kind of an issue and yeah. And there's people just constantly frustrated and mad. You lose that excitement and that draw to come back into the game and the mode. So I think there's an element as, as a community that we play that we kind of ref- we, we create this environment of just frustration, right? And as a result, it's just not fun anymore. When you get frustrated day in, day out, and all you do is talk about negativity, negative people circle around other negative people and they can have a party. But for a lot of other people, it just gets old. It gets tiresome. And I think that I think all these factors play a point in it. And, and, the, and the reality is, too, is that as a community, we play a part and the game plays a part. Right. So there's things that we need to also look at. Okay, well, if people are that way, is it because there's things in the game? Are there things that we can do differently in the game? Is there different things that we can engage users in the game so that we don't see that behavior? So I think it's a two way street um, where they kind of feed off of each other. But I will say this, Gut Fox and Texas, you guys can comment more about this because you're out there on the streets and, and I see it. I've seen the negativity climb year over year and i think like this year the game has done a lot of good things i mean i see a lot of improvements in the ultimate team the different kind of modes and them trying to branch out and i'm not saying that because i'm an ea employee i'm saying that because i've seen the changes since 10 it's cra- gradually getting better there are key frustration points i get but i do see this year that there's just a, like a lot of negativity i've talked to people that um other game changers and other stuff they're like it just seems a lot more this year for some reason and we're all a bit perplexed on like how do we fix that how do we solve that is that an issue of we're not communicating better are we not engaging better are we not giving our community access to our developers to ask those hard questions these are things that i just constantly think about it's stuff that keeps me up at night no job should keep you up at night like this but it's like how do we solve for this and that's where my passion and that's why people ask me, why do you keep doing this community management role if people are so negative and so angry? Because I want to solve it. I want to fix it. And I know I cannot fix everything, but there has to be an answer. So maybe that's what drives me every day when I wake up. Like I get excited about this. You can hear it in my tone of voice. And it's, it's like there, there has to be a solve. There has to be a solve of how do we make the game better? How do we make the community better? How do we, how do we work together better? Because that is the number one thing that I have to say that – I love the community, but I'm sorry, Gut Fox in Texas. You guys, but we fight amongst ourselves. We got competitors fighting against competitors, YouTubers fighting against YouTubers. The reason why change doesn't happen, in my opinion, and I and I told this to people before I started at EA, if you want our, our true community, band together around a cause and do a movement. Two movements I saw very successful that died short. CFM movement, hashtag CFM movement, and hashtag little Jimmy, right? So I, I told Toke, you know, he, he, he rallied people around a cause. And as a community, we have to be bigger than our channels and figure out how we can work better together to rally causes and drive like the need to fix things together, like champion things together as a community on like, no, we really want this fixed. You, you say this, but you know, we got the masses now saying really fix this. And as a community manager, I need to figure out ways how I can get the community to realize that message and champion and fight for the things that they want, but as they rally together to do that. So I went on a soapbox, I'm stepping down (laughs) and moving away from the mic, but, um, I get, I get really passionate about this. I'm really passionate about this. Basically what that boils down to EA is telling us to riot more in a more organized fashion (laughs) to really burn it down. Texas, what are your thoughts? I mean, it makes sense. Like, if more of us were kind of on the same page about a lot of the things that we want and not arguing arguing with everybody else about it, a lot of things would change. But when you got, like, different communities split up in different camps, it kind of is hard to listen to three people as opposed to listening to just one person telling what everybody wants. So, yeah, we probably do need more organ- organization when it comes to this stuff so we can see more impact. But I'm kind of disappointed my man said he didn't he rally behind a cause. He didn't mention my Marquette King cause. I'm kind of mad that he didn't. What was your Marquette King cause? 90 speed for King when EA uh, back in the day gave him like 65 speed because they didn't care. And we got my man 85 speed. Nice. Yeah. You know what? You know what, though? You could have championed a cause, you know, when Mudhead did their ultimate ticket. You could have championed for a Marquette King card, man. But you know what? 
I was trying. I was trying, I was trying yeah, to pull packs, bro. I'm saying. I, I try to pull packs. It's just, well, it's just not. My, <laughs> I, I'm never gonna pull one of those, bro. I, I can pull a billion packs, and they're never gonna pull a golden ticket. <laughs> No, I think oh, I think Kralo was talking about when uh, Toke got Mutthead to make Derek Carr the golden ticket. Oh, you were trying to like use my, my 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 I can't beat Toke. Hey, I'd be kind of cool if I could have done that, but yeah. Yeah, we could no, we could have got, got a bot or something to beat him. Yeah, pay for a bot. <laughs> yeah. Oh man! Oh wow! But anyways, uh, Texas, I do want to hear your 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 what your thoughts. I got one more question after this, and I, I don't know how many how many Texas has, but. Uh, uh, what? Why do you think people burn out streaming Madden and, and in this community? Well, because I, I think people stream, burn out because it's not really much in variety to do that people may want to watch. And so, like for me, um, I don't. I, I do a lot of different things. I'll, I can stream mud drafts. I can stream uh, CFM. I can stream solo challenges or repulling packs. So I got a lot of things that I can do to kind of keep myself kind of from doing the same thing where some people have channels built on just playing head to head and after playing three hours a day like daily you just get tired of it and you same gotta like get actually yeah the same two plays seeing, seeing the same defense same offense same players playing against the same guys <laughs> and yeah like, like Kratos said answers earlier answering the same questions because all the people gonna be in your streams and you hope people that are in there will answer it for you but if you don't you gotta go back with the same Okay, I use this playbook, that playbook, and I do this and that. It's just it get kind of tiresome at times. So if you're not maintaining a healthy relationship with other things, you're gonna end up getting tired of it. That happens with relationships you, like with life. Like if you're not doing a lot of things with your significant other that are keeping you like preoccupied, you're gonna just get bored and go do something else. I gotcha. Kralo, what were you gonna say? No, I was going to ask you. I mean, you know, uh, I've been watching you, you know, um, when I used to work for Curse, Twitch, Amazon, whatever, you know, the whole entire gamut. Um, you know, you, you were doing your reviews. You were doing your streaming. You know, from your personal experience, have you have you gotten burned out? I mean, because you, you, you stream, you know, Weekend League. You stream head-to-head. You have your consistent schedule. I know you have a life outside of, um, you know, outside of Madden. You know, you do your YouTube and, like – what's what's going through your head and i think that's just a fair question to ask like where are you at with this and why do you think all this is going on no the the reason it's such a big deal to me now is because like all right so i stream three times a week do youtube and then do the day job and during the day job i'm just thinking about mad stuff so it, it's like like me what's that like, i do the same thing i'd yeah, be in my I, like my I, office like i wonder what power up they're gonna drop with which ability yeah I, i'm I, the same <laughs> way I, I go to work and i think about it all the time. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't kidding. think we're that special that way. And, and I think the, the, what I'm worried about is like streaming more. Like say, say I, I'm hoping one day to end up quitting the, the day job. That's the end goal. And to, to stream more and do YouTube content like that full time. But I, w- with the reason that's on my mind is because doing that, you risk the burnout factor, which so many other ones have gone through that have streamed constantly. And, and that's kind of what I'm concerned. Like, I, am I just going to get sick of it if I just do it every day for four hours playing head to head? And so I, I think that's why I'm asking the question. That's why I'm kind of worried about is, is I'm legit looking for answers. Like, is this going to happen? Is, is this me? And then what, what the hell do I do with my life? Do I switch over to another game? And then, then I lose the, the, the audience. And, and then basically I'm like, okay, well, now I got to go suck dick for a job because I don't have enough money to pay rent. So that's that's the end goal, I think, is me in, in an alleyway with older men. Um, and, and that's not not place I want to be, really, a couple years from now. So that's why that's why I, I was trying to hopefully get an answer from you guys. Um, I will say, well, if you if you quit your job yet, you're doing probably the same thing. I don't, I don't know what you do, because Gut Fox is uh, super private. Dude could be out here working for the government for all we know. He's, it might be actually the feds. But if you haven't got tired of the job yet right now, I don't know if you're going to get tired of this one because this one is a little bit less uh, taxing, I would say, yeah. than actually doing a nine-to-five, interacting with people you don't want to deal with, <laughs> dealing with the boss you don't want to talk to, <laughs> and meet deadlines. Like, Mad's a little bit a little easier, man, so I feel like you'd be fine. Yeah, yeah. And that's the thing. I mean, I already stream three times a week, so if I bump it up to five, is that that much worse or not? I don't know. So that's just kind of. You need to have a plan. You need to have a plan and a schedule. The reality is that no matter what game you do, I think I think this goes for any game or anything. You're just it's if you don't have a plan, um, or if you don't have like a like I'm not even saying it sounds weird like a business. 
like a roadmap or a business plan on exactly how you kind of want to attack this and say, you know what, if your objective is making money, this is the plan to kind of get there and, and, and is, or the objective is to stop my day job. This is the plan. I'm going to invest myself in this particular type of plan. And this, how I'm going to evolve beyond that. It's easy to get stuck in that rut. And I think what happens to a lot of people is I think the reality is got five people don't have a plan, right? They go into it, say, I'm going to do this and this is what I envision, but they haven't really sat down and said, okay, this is my goal. And these are all the things I'm actually going to do to kind of get to that goal. And that I'm going to build for myself personally, some, whether you want to call them benchmarks or KPIs or goals or stretch goals. And I'm going to go here and here and here. I mean, you look at QJB, you know, and for him, he was like, I'm going to do all this kind of stuff, my career, my player for console. And then he got to a sticking point. Anto got to the same place as well. And they and they were like, I got to either reinvent myself or I got to launch out a new space, try something different. And they had to dabble a little. And I think that some people get so stuck that they're afraid to branch out. Um, but there there is that window in time where you're just going to have to do it. Um, either, you know, be that guy, be the Madden guy, be the mud guy, which personally, I think you have that ability to do. Um, to me, when it comes down to card reviews, you're that guy, you know, you're the consistent streamer that I can depend on, on, you know, the three days a week that you're going to stream to kind of tune in and have conversation. Um, you're the guy that kind of does the patch notes review. You become that to me. And I think you've become that to a lot of other people. And, the question now that you have to ask yourself is since you've become that, what is the evolution of that? You know, is, is the evolution by streaming all these, these time periods or is it taking your content that you're creating to a whole new type of level, you know, taking the podcast to a whole new type of level. Maybe it's like, okay, I'm going to branch out, maybe playing video games and, and doing them on Twitch is not the right place to go and dab in that space, but maybe I'll do a podcast around gaming in general, around sports games, and then I'll evolve from sports games to do something else. But I think that you don't have to worry about it because I know your drive. Um, I, I think a lot of people just get burned out because they're like, they're not innovating. They're not thinking beyond and they're not trying different things. But yeah, um, yeah. I hear yeah. what you're saying. I mean, the thing is like, I've always prided myself at living my life one quarter mile at a time, much like Vin Diesel, my hero in Fast and the Furious does. So uh, making a plan is kind of tough for me to keep living my motto, um, but it is good. It is good <laughs> advice, Kralo. Uh, but uh, I was just joking, joking there. So I don't know, Texas. Do you have any other questions for Kralo? Yeah, I, 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 I do got... appreciate. I do appreciate it, Kralo. Sorry, I was joking. Around oh no that, problem, but, yeah. no problem. I think there's like 20 other more here from Texas. No, no, so just, I mean, I'm just kidding. So I'm just gonna ask two. <laughs> ask two. I mean, these are just kind of thoughts, man. Like when you no, are, honestly, I don't mind at all. I don't mind yeah. at all. Trust me. I got you. Got you. So one of them um, is um, um, what things have you learned to manage how to balance being the middleman? Like, like, because it's this job since you're kind of basically the messenger a lot of the damn time. Like, how have you? Uh, like, what thing? What what skills have you picked up on how to manage that? Yeah. Um. So. Uh, I picked up a lot. Uh, a lot of it's just kind of like a uh, trial and error. Um, you know, one of the, one of the things like I had a, uh, you know, when I when I first started EA, I was like, I'm gonna do all this kind of stuff. I have this plan that I want to go ahead and accomplish all these things, and I'm gonna do it in six months. Well, six months into it, probably accomplished maybe like a quarter of it. Um, and um, one of the things that some, sometimes you can set things up to you and you learn on how to manage it. Sometimes your body tells you otherwise. Um, I kind of had an incident at EA one, one night. I left the studio super late and I started having chest pains, right? Um, and that kind of was a wake-up call for me because in the end, it ended up being a thing called costochondritis where it's just an inflammation of the chest wall because I was always typing all the time, like for 13, 14, 15 hours a day, just <laughs> typing, typing, typing. So, you know, truckers get it because they're driving the whole time so that – everything they they're locked in that position so your chest wall kind of gets inflamed so when that happened i was like i gotta learn work-life balance you know i gotta slow down i gotta i gotta go ahead and take my weekends for myself um one of the things that i do to kind of help manage things is i try to take at least one day on the weekend to just not be on social at all it's very difficult fridays are my day when content comes out i have my routine um, and I'll, that's another thing that I've done to kind of help me manage things. Um, but like on Sundays, I just try to take that day. It's for me, my wife, my family, um, just to recharge the battery. I need one day to fully recharge. 
Um, some people need two, some people need five, you know, but, um, I just, you know, I, I take my Sundays off. Um, another thing that I've done is I kind of, I built a routine on the weekends, right? So, um, I wake up, do Saturday content. I'll go get my haircut every week, talk to the barber, go get a cup of coffee, sit down for like two hours, work on emails, uh, go ahead and answer some community questions on Twitter. And then I shut it down. That kind of, it, it's, it's a routine I do that helps me manage, I, this is when I'm going to start my weekend. Because in this role, it has to be a mental decision to shut off because you can work at EA 24 seven if you want to. There's that amount of work or projects or special things you wanna do. Like it, it can consume you. Um, the other thing that I've learned is you, it's okay to shut off social media. You know, And I hope people don't get offended when I say this, I really do love community. And the reason I love community is because I get to engage with them and I get an opportunity in my in my job, in my platform to speak into their life, to encourage them, to help them if they have a problem. Um, you know, if they have a problem with the game, sometimes that opens a door for friendships, you know, and and other cool things, right? And I've seen that type of growth from the community. But what I've learned is, is that social media can be a major distraction with all the notifications going off all the time. So like Mondays and Tuesdays, I just tell myself, I'm gonna get in the office and I'm gonna allot one hour to doing responding to social media and then I shut it off and I just go ahead and do my job. Um, you know, working out is another thing to kind of manage certain things. But, and then, you know, I, I hope I'm answering your question here, Texas. I'm just like trying to spitball just things that I've learned to kind of help manage kind of the role and whatnot. But, um, yeah, Those what, you, what, you, what, what you really need is a fall guy. Um, was it Chris Carter who said I have a fall guy? So I think I think you should just create like a guy at the office, make make his name like Frank or somebody, and then like <laughs> if anybody ever criticizes you on Twitter, be like that, that, that Frank again. He's screwing that up. Sorry, we're, we'll have to we'll let that talk. We we docked his pay thirty percent, um, stuff like that. So always, always just have a fall guy. Um, and, okay, and, I'll write that down. Yeah, yeah, definitely have a fall guy. <laughs> uh, Texas, any other questions? Yeah, last one. Um, this one is a little bit more um, not in line with anything mud, but it's then this running thing I've been saying on Twitter with Game of Thrones fans. Um, oh. They think that you look <laughs> like Grey Worm. Whoa, is he moonlighting? It, and I'm like, uh, he, uh, my man Craig, if you guys know what he looks like, you can Google Grey Worm and Google Craylo, or maybe Gut Fox if he wants to put in and edit at the end of this podcast. He can. I don't think I look nothing like. And I find it offensive that they doing some light skin bias on you and saying you like somebody <laughs> you don't look like. How do you respond to that? Um, so the thing is, is that, so I guess my haircut is very symbolic of like gray worm, but I think the people that are making that comment are attributing the personality of gray worm, you know, of all business, serious, attack, go, 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 go. And he is he's always fighting for a higher cause and that's right, him okay. so when guru uh teases me like you know i, I can't remember the, the redheaded guy in uh game of thrones what's his name i always butcher this uh what you would call it that is one of the wildlings what, right no yeah, yeah no no he, he uh yeah one of the wildlings uh, are, you know, you, become, are you talking about Tormund? yes Tormund. so everyone like jokes around like you think he's the guy's fun loving joking around all the time you know redhead that's guru right so that's definitely a lot a lot of the person the the personality attributes i attribute to him because of that persona guru does that to me mainly because of i'm just i'm just like gray worm like pretty serious i mean granted there's a part of me that still exists um, you know, unlike Grey Worm, you know, and I am happily married. But um, on that front, um, you know, that's do, where the resemblance also, comes. Also, more per- do you also still have balls? <laughs> <laughs> I do. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what I was like, referencing, no, my friend. No. <laughs> that's what I was referencing. Um, you know, but that that's where that resemblance kind of comes from and stuff yeah, like actually, that. Yeah, so it's more so yeah. about the personality, not so about the period. I'm like, yeah. about to fight on your behalf, bro. Because I have an afro and I'm black and I get quest love all the time. I look nothing like that guy, but because I have some of the features. 
Some people say I look like Vin Diesel too. I mean, but I don't see the resemblance there. You know, um, I'm definitely <laughs> not. Living, I'm definitely not living my life a quarter mile at a time. Oh, More like oh, I'm driving. I'm driving. You know, when it says 65, I'm driving 60 just because I'm that guy. Oh, you know? F- Florida drivers, huh? Um, yeah, but yeah. but at least I'm driving on the right lane, like not oh. on the far left, but in the middle. Oh, good. <laughs> Sorry. Good. Yeah. Hey, no, no, no. I guess one more question I saw from Texas. I really want want to talk about um last thing the twitch prime um i'm gonna say the twitch prime promo was y- your guys's best this year i i really enjoyed it as a streamer you know people would be, be you know they'd be in twitch they'd have twitch prime because of either madden or get their um family so it, it benefits me um that's why i like it but i also at the beginning of the game when they were 90 overall and some of the best probably the cheat like two dollars and 50 cents a month for 490 overalls or well, not maybe one or two with the, the tokens but they were it's like i always told you like it's the cheapest way to improve your team early in the year but nowadays those cards don't really compete is there any any thought about increasing the overall of the twitch prime players the feedback's been passed along i mean i was in a meeting today and we you know we talked about it and passed it along the, the thing to keep in mind at the end of the day is that the twitch prime program is something that's owned and managed by twitch right um you know the oh. the nice thing about, yeah so it's it, it's it's more it's well we, we we developed the content but a lot of the stuff is in partnership with them right so at the end of the day you know when we look at twitch prime we look at that program it's not just something that we've done we do work with them um on a lot of these kind of things the cool thing about the twitch prime program is and and we hear this all the time in the community is you know we need new legends i think the program has allowed us to go and get more legends this year and i, I think that's been Oh, that's Probably one awesome. of the more exciting things. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's really cool. This year, like like Mel Renfro, we got him. You know, Harold Carmichael. Like some of these players, I had no clue. But I'm like Mel Renfro. When I saw his stats and his card, I'm like, this is awesome. You know, I didn't know this <laughs> yeah. guy. He's got great stats. Harold Carmichael, six eight. You know, everyone's thinking of Finneran. I'm like, dude, where was this guy? You know, and um, it's just been really cool to see that part where it's been a big community request to get more legends in the game. And and I think that this this uh, this has allowed us to kind of to bring some some more legends. And it's really cool. So it'll be interesting to see how things progress in the future. Um, you know, the Friday Night Madden, um, we've gotten a lot of questions about that. You know, we're like you guys get you guys hear the things why do they pick so and so or whatever you got to keep in mind that with the twitch prime program there's come a lot of benefits like the platform having that front page twitch access you know but a lot of times when we're trying to develop these kind of programs and they were before my time it's a pilot program how do we go ahead and build this out how can we reach out to certain people at this specific time that we can depend on to build a program around this and prove the concept out and see how well it does and then it's like well then how do we take it to the next level how do we take madden drops to the next level what is lacking in madden drops or twitch drops is it the content or do we open that up to other people that do streams right you know where they can go ahead and 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 get this type of thing for their streams there's a lot of questions that we ask and we have to kind of think about well in light of opening up these things and doing these kind of things how well does it perform so the only way that you can do that is like really working with certain people testing that out testing out the waters you know doing one run with them then maybe doing it again and and just gauging from it so like we're innovating with the game my job with communication and the community is looking at all of our programs game changers you know Friday Night Madden, all these kind of things. It's like, how do we how do we innovate in the space of community engagement and make it better? Because you guys all agree, it's not been the best, but I think it can get better. And we need to solve for that thing that you, we were talking about earlier. Why aren't people having fun? Why aren't they engaging? Why aren't they streaming? I get a little sad when I jump on Twitch and I don't see a lot of people streaming. So it's like, what can we do differently in that space? How can we reinvent this? What will get them engaged? So honestly, guys, you guys live it day in, day out don't hesitate to reach out to me and let me know about what some ideas you guys have because i'm open to it i really am um you know uh i can't fix everything um you guys are a big component of that yeah yeah i know i i've i think i've given you feedback like i think i've tweeted at you or something just to make twitch prime um available to all streamers um just if you're if you spend time in a in a madden stream madden 18 stream 
that people can get drops that way instead of having to wait specific times for a specific streamer. Um, and and we talked about it and you said there's like questions with like legal and I don't know something like that. So that's that was my thing is to let everybody in on it that streams your game so that way there's just more viewership overall. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, as long as as long as you guys aren't singling out Hope anymore, I think that's cool. Just don't don't let him get anything anymore. Um, <laughs> I love that guy, man. Yeah, he's cool. Yeah, yeah, I like him. I like him a lot too. He's a funny guy. Um, all right, but that is that is it. So I I hope you guys. Oh, one more thing. I do hope you guys continue into nineteen because I I really liked it and I think people like the legends and stuff and and Mm -hmm. uh, everything overall. So Texas, any last words? Um, other than um, glad that you and your family are all right. All right. Thanks, man. That means a lot. Uh, we're um, uh. Really just have to say for those people that know, um, really appreciate thoughts and prayers for my wife. Um, for the people that don't know, um, my wife was involved in a major car accident when she came down to Florida to move here. And, uh, you know, she has a rod in her leg and busted collarbone and fractured, uh, uh, I think it's like T10 or something like that. Um, you know, it's it's been that that alone has taught me a lot about myself and just um what's really important, man, at the end of the day, I, I, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's the family and friends that you get through these entire experiences. I know that if there was ever a moment that I needed to, to call anybody in the community because I was having a rough time, the community has allowed me this opportunity to, to call them and talk to them about some of the struggles that I'm going through at home, you know, because of the car accident or the financial concern, just a lot of stuff, right. That comes with it. Um, but, uh, the good news is my wife finally put aside the cane. So uh, she was on a walker for about a month and a half. Uh, she was using a cane for about two weeks. And I think it was yesterday um, she started walking around the block, you know, with a little bit of a, a gimp <laughs> with the two dogs. So to see That's this awesome. happen, um, it's great news. It's really it's what's important, man, at the end of the day. So yeah, definitely. That's great to hear. Great to hear, Kralo. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but all right, um, thanks for thanks for being honest and, and generously giving us your time for for this couple hours uh, that we learned so much about yeah. uh, Madden. Uh, this is Muttman episode ninety five. Kralo, thanks again. Texas, thank you. I'll see you next week. Mm-hmm. I'll talk to you next week. I'm, I'm gonna buy you a beer in Orlando when I get out there, bro. <laughs> beer, bro. We're make, going for the hard time. alcohol. <laughs> no, I, I ain't got that budget. I, I, I ain't got. No, I ain't got the Johnny Walker Blue budget. Yeah, I'll, I'll pay. I'll He'll pay. expense it. <laughs> Uh, good stuff. Well, thanks for having me on, guys. Really appreciate it. Thanks for letting me go on rants and stuff and always enjoy this kind of stuff. Uh, if anyone listens and for some reason I'm not on again, maybe I said something I shouldn't. But in the end, <laughs> um, I will say, um, you know, we're not trying to hide anything. Just got to be really careful. Want to make sure we communicate the right things. And I uh, really appreciate this opportunity to go Fox in Texas. Yeah, again, look into that fall guy, Kralo. But uh, take it easy, man. See you guys. All right. Sounds good. Take care, guys. Cheers.